The Built Fort Tough BCS pregame on Fox is sponsored by Tostitos. Good times guaranteed. Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. I'm Sam Rosen along with Tim Ryan and Chris Myers. A great matchup. Two highly ranked teams undefeated. Boise State, a high scoring team, was here in 2007 and won. This is a team that depends on their quarterback, Kellen Moore. Well, and he's really good, Sam. They are so explosive offensively, 44 points per game. I think they're looking for a little redemption. Look, TCU is the only team to beat them in the last couple of years. A couple of keys for Boise State. I think they got to be able to run the football. They got to have some balance offensively to take the pressure off the quarterback, Kellen Moore. He is incredibly good. His numbers speak for themselves. Themselves, and he's got to be patient. TCU's great on defense. They keep everything in front of them. The quarterback's got to be patient today. The Horn Frogs of TCU went 12 0 this season. They have won four consecutive bowl games. They are here on the big stage because they feel they have a team that can contend for the national championship. Well, and they're worthy of that respect. Look, they are very, very good on both sides of the ball when you look at them. The quarterback, Mark Dalton, really gets after it. Uh, and he can throw it everywhere. He can spread it around. But when I think of the Horn Frogs, I think of a power run game. Boise State's got to get after it today at the D line and linebackers. Take the fight to TCU. Boise State comes out with the sledgehammer. That signifies their special teams and the hammer that they hit with. The Boise State Broncos, 13 and 0 this season. They met up with TCU in the Poinsettia Bowl last season. TCU won by one point. They're coming here to try and turn it around on the big national stage, trying to go undefeated. Frogs of TCU waiting for their appearance. And here they come, led by head coach Gary Patterson in his ninth season. He has brought TCU up to the national stage, ranked number four in the BCS standings. What a season they've had. They won 12 and 0. They've won 14 in a row. This is a team with great offense and great defense. Jerry Hughes, their star on defense is a player that maybe will go in the first round Tim well he is a great football player he's got 11 and a half sacks this season and I think you know he's clearly the guy that Boise State's got to get blocked Boise State down there starting right tackle today so they'll have Brunel Myers out there playing right tackle against Jerry Hughes that's going to be a matchup to keep our eyes on now we go down to the field to Chris Myers. What's going on, Chris? Well, it's noisy and loud, Sam, with Coach Gary Patterson. Biggest game in the history of TCU football, Coach. How would you describe the magnitude of the moment? Well, I don't know if it's the biggest game in our history. That would mean this is the end. So for us, you know, we're here, we got a great opponent. Came here to win, and we'll see you in the next three hours whether we can get that done or not. All right, well, good luck, Coach. We appreciate it. I appreciate it, too. All right, Sam, some of the players feel they're playing for a national championship on TCU. Football team captain, Hollywood star, and electric entertainer. The coin toss going on at the middle of the field. That is WWE superstar John Cena, the Grand Marshal, for the coin toss. Our referee Bill Lemonnier from the Big Ten. 
We'll flip the coin as the captains are being introduced to the crowd. The injured captain for Boise State is Rich Brockle. What an atmosphere. Can you feel the energy inside this building right now? What? Boise State is a visiting team. You'll call the coin toss. Commemorative coin here with Fiesta Bowl. TCU has won the toss and they will receive to start the game as the band plays and the atmosphere is electric here in Glendale. We're set for the open kickoff in a moment. People started to recognize us a little more, you know, the target on our chest got a little bigger. Everybody's gunning for you now, you know, you're not really flying under the radar anymore, you know, because people know who you are and, uh, you know, I, I like it that way because then you get everybody's best game. You know, every game's fun because every, every, everywhere you go, I mean, places are going to sell out because they want to see the Broncos, and that's kind of where it changed since I've been here, and it, it's awesome that way. I wouldn't want it any other way. That's injured tight end Richie Brockle. He will not play. He's on crutches, but he is a captain of the team, and he played in the game in 2007 when Boise State upset and defeated Oklahoma and really ascended to the national stage. The Broncos getting set to kick off. Back deep is Greg McCoy, a defensive back, probably the fastest man on the TCO team, Kyle Brotsman. The junior will kick it off. Chris Peterson, the head coach of Boise State, his teams have gone 48 and four over his four years at Boise. And we're underway in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. McCoy on the return. is hit hard and brought down at the 24-yard line by Byron Hout. Andy Dalton, the redshirt junior, will lead his team onto the field on offense. The Mountain West Conference Offensive Player of the Year. Now, let's take a look at the Merrill Lynch Wealth Management starting lineups. Outstanding running backs. Joseph Turner, the senior. Ed Wesley, Matthew Tucker. Those are freshmen. Antoine Hicks, Jimmy Young, great speed and wide receiver. The offensive line is very, very big. Four of the five are over 300 pounds. Out of the shotgun. Dalton to put it up, has time, and throws wide. Jeremy Curley, the intended receiver, the, the pass thrown offline. Now let's take a look at the Merrill Lynch Wealth Management starting lineups for Boise State on defense. Four-man front, Ryan Winterswike, the junior, gets the most pass pressure. The linebackers are active. Darrell Acre outstanding. Kyle Wilson, senior cornerback, the leader in the secondary. Three wide receivers inside handoff Turner slowed down and brought down by Winston Venable. Good start defensively by Boise State. Well, and that's what they're going to have to do. Chase Baker, who's playing nose tackle for Boise State, really did a good job of driving the offensive lineman into the backfield and making Jerome Turner bounce. As soon as he bounced, Winston Venable was right there to clean it up. Venable has had an outstanding season. And I think when you watch number 17 today for Boise State, especially with all the perimeter and the edge running, some of that zone read stuff you see out of TCU, Venable is going to have to have an outstanding performance. Four wide receivers on third and 10. Everybody out. Dalton throws, completes to Ryan Christian, but he's brought down short of the first down. George Iloka and Brandon Thompson in on the stop on Ryan Christian and TCU brings out the punting unit. Anson Kelton big sophomore 6'4 260 with a powerful leg. Watch out for Kyle Wilson back there now this guy is a terrific terrific punt returner a couple of touchdowns the guy can really really return the punts. 
Good kick by Kelton. Over the head of Wilson. He grabs it at the six. Brings it back and falls forward to the 15-yard line. Malcolm Williams with a tackle for TCU. 62-yard punt, a nine-yard return. And the redshirt sophomore, Kellen Moore from Prosser, Washington. 39 touchdown passes this season leads his team onto the field. Yeah, incredible. 64 in two years. An amazing number for him. 39 touchdowns, you said it. He throws a touchdown every 10 passing attempts this year for Boise State. And they work out of the shotgun as well. Stacked wide receivers to the left. Moore gets pressure from Daniels, throws it way downfield for Titus Young and overthrew him by five yards. He's got a strong arm. Let's take a look at the Merrill Lynch Wealth Management starting lineups for Boise State. Jeremy Avery rushed for over 1,100 yards. Dan Paul, a good blocking fullback. Titus Young, outstanding speed. And Tommy Gallardo, the tight end, an excellent blocker. Up front, Thomas Bird, the center, calls all the signals. He's a coach's son. He knows football. Two running backs, Jeremy Avery and Doug Martin in the backfield. Moore on second down. Off the hands, incomplete, intended for Austin Pettis, who is back from a broken leg, suffered in the last game of the season. Let's take a look at the Merrill Lynch Wealth Management starting lineup for TCU on defense. Jerry Hughes, the All-American Award winner, he's the man to watch, but Wayne Daniels is outstanding as well. Darrell Washington and Tank Carter, excellent playmakers and linebacker. Nick Sanders, good shutdown corner. Greg McCoy, the man with a great speed on the other cornerback. Tommy Gallarda, the tight end, splits out on third and ten. And it looked like Hughes jumped offside. Looked like he was unabated to the quarterback. Yeah, I think Kellen Moore in Boise State wanted to get a late hit there on Jerry Hughes as he came unabated and then laid out the QB. Unabated the quarterback, number 98. Five yard penalty, still third down. There's Jerry Hughes there. You could tell he's clearly off on the long before the ball was snapped by Thomas Bird. Unabated, and then he goes and gives a big time shot on Kellen Moore. Jerry Hughes is setting the tempo, Sam. That's right. TCU's third down defense ranks number one in the country. Third and five now, and there is Gary Patterson. Kellen Moore's brother Kirby is in at wide receiver. Moore puts it up deep again and overthrows everybody. Titus Young was the man out there, but he was well covered. So it's three and out for each team in their first possession. Yeah, that was a miscommunication on the route. The receiver was nowhere near the football when Kellen Moore just unloaded it down the sideline. He did do a good job of stepping up. Jerry Hughes had good pressure around the corner. That's one thing. You look at Kellen Moore for a young guy, Sam, he's got a great presence in the pocket, knowing when to subtly move around. Jeremy Curley, the Mountain West Conference Special Teams Player of the Year, two touchdown returns this season, will receive Ross, rather, Rotsman's punt. Curley takes it to the outside with good room and he is chased out of bounds by Kyle Efaw. but good field position for TCU there's a feet and flag on yeah, the play on I the think, far side I think they're going to get Tanner Brock with a late hit over on the sidelines he absolutely ear -holed a Boise State player who was trying to cover the kick and it was after the return guy Curley was already out of bounds Tanner Brock came and just laid him out Dead ball, personal foul, number 35, TCU, 15-yard penalty, first down. That's Tanner Brock, the man you called. There's the late hit, so it cost TCU 15 yards. We'll be right back. 
We are back. Let's take a look at tonight's Ram keys to the game, Tim. Well, Boise State up front. They've got to be physical with TCU's offensive line. TCU put up 275 yards rushing on them last year in the Point Seattle Bowl. And then TCU, they have got to stop the run and make Boise State and Kellen Moore one-dimensional. Dalton, the quarterback, the true freshman Matthew Tucker, number 29, and at running back, Tucker was got the fake, but it was Dalton carrying. Dalton, a good runner, gets up across the 35. Dalton rushed for over 500 yards this season. Well, and he's so much better at, at, at the zone read, and he's going to take a look at this backer. He squeezes along with the defensive end. Now he's just going to take it right out of the belly of the tailback, and he's going to run. And you look at Andy Dalton, and he is a clear running threat. He didn't even run the football in high school. I was talking to him the other day. He said he only ran it about 10 times, but his feel now of the zone read is so much better than it used to be. Tucker, nice little cutback and a good run. Takes three, maybe four. Boise State Broncos to stop him at the 44. That's a first down for TCU. Luke Shivers, the fullback, with a good block. They have got a good running attack with all four of these players over 500 yards rushing, led by Matthew Tucker and Ed Wesley, both freshmen. And Matthew Tucker's a true freshman. He's incredibly good. TCU going with the up-tempo in the hurry-up offense. They spread it out. Dalton looks to the sideline where he gets signals flashed in. There's no headset communication in college football. There's, there's some confusion for sure. Dalton wasn't sure. Looking for his plays on his wristband. Dalton comes to the sideline. Timeout TCU. No score in the game in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on Fox is sponsored by Bud Light. With the just right taste that's not too heavy, not too light, the difference is drinkability. We are back. Now it's time for the race's perfect profile. Both teams undefeated this season. First non-championship BCS game with two undefeated teams. Boise State, number one scoring offense in Division I football. TCU, number one total defense. In Division One, yeah, what gives? And and Boise State, 44 points per no. game. TCU defensively, just a little over 12 points per per game is what they allow. TCU spread offense, four wide receivers. Problems with headsets on the sideline for the coaches. In motion, Wesley, the running back. Everybody out. Quick pass is intercepted. Brought back by Brandon Thompson for a touchdown for Boise State. Junior cornerback, Brandon Thompson with the pick. The fourth interception return for a touchdown this season for the Boise State Broncos. Well, that's what you can do when you're sitting in the zone, and Brandon Thompson is just going to read the quarterback and undercut the slant route. You see right there, you had the slant route from the wide receiver, and Brandon Thompson just read the QB, undercut it, fifth interception of the year, this one going back for six. The extra point is good. And the... Boise State Broncos get off to a fast start thanks to their defense and Brandon Thompson. Sam Brandon Thompson brings it back. That's the fourth interception return for a touchdown this season. And watch Antoine Hicks. He just decelerates on the slant route. He just stopped and made it easy for Brandon Thompson to make the break on that throw from Andy Dalton. An upset Andy Dalton on the sideline moments ago. 51 yard interception return for a touchdown for Brandon Thompson. And you can't stop. I mean, if you're Antoine Hicks, you just can't stop on the slant route. Whether the ball's coming to you or not, you got to go. You got to finish the route. And I think that's what the quarterback, Andy Dalton, is agitated about. Greg McCoy and Jeremy Curley are deep for TCU. Brotsman's kick coming down to Curley at the two. 
Trying to find the lane. Battles his way up to the 24 yard line where he's brought down by Jason Robinson number five our bull bash on Fox continues tomorrow night with the FedEx Orange Bowl as the Iowa Hawkeyes meet the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets our coverage of the FedEx Orange Bowl begins tomorrow at 730 Eastern 430 Pacific in high def only on Fox. And our Chris Myers who's everywhere will be there as well. We're glad to have him on the sideline tonight. He'll be at the Orange Bowl the FedEx Orange Bowl tomorrow night. Turner in the backfield with Dalton. They fake the end around. Dalton puts it up again and he put it up into coverage trying to hit Curtis Clay. Let's check in with the traveling man Chris Myers Sam behind the TCU bench Andy Dalton not only upset about the interception and not necessarily blaming the receiver even on the series before he had trouble hearing when he went to the phone to talk to the offensive coaches you mentioned the headset problem they're having problems getting the plays in he is being frustrated by that and the noise level has gone up a few octaves since the opening kick. Check out the noise level and flags fly. Movement on the offensive line for TCU. Ball start, 78 offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Josh Vernon, the right guard, was called for the fall start. Well, and TCU's got some nerves working right now. This is the biggest stage. This is the biggest game for them in 50 years. And I know they've had a lot of matchups in hostile territory. Going to Clemson this year was a big one. They've scheduled some big opponents over the last couple of years. Of the Utah game at home and the crowd was going crazy but this is the biggest game for these players out here right now and I think the nerves are getting to him Sam early in this football game. Dalton started to run drops back to throw and it's batted away. Kyle Wilson the senior cornerback from Piscataway New Jersey broke up the pass. Pass intended for Ryan Christian. Yeah and he's in man coverage he gets turned around but he never takes his eyes off the football and is able to get in the throwing lane and go get a pass breakup. Ryan Christian was open going down the field on a post route. Andy Dalton you see right there seven interceptions only in his last 14 games three of them versus Boise State. Going back to that point set bowl last year. Four wide receivers in. Blitz coming. Quick toss outside to Curley, and he's brought down. Shea McClellan, the defensive end, got back to help on the tackle. And I think part of the nerves right now for this TCU football team is you think of all season long, they haven't played in a dome. They have not played indoors. The roof is closed here today in, in Arizona, and as you said at the start of the game, uh, Sam, this place is electric. Oh, this boy. atmosphere is absolutely cranking. Kyle Wilson who said one of his happiest moments ever was when he walked just a few weeks ago to graduation graduated four years senior degree in communications would like to play pro ball he's had a great career flags fly outside the contact number 98 defense five yard penalty still fourth down all that on Ryan Winterswike the defensive end. You're talking about Kyle Wilson you know he's the, really the only guy that started and played in the 07 game against Oklahoma. So he's the one guy I think coming back here and the schedule being the same the hotel being the same all that stuff the familiarity he's really helped his teammates tap into it. There's Wilson on the return picks up a couple of blocks gets to the outside there's a flag down back at the 35 Wilson ridden out of bounds at the 48 yard line. But we'll check out the flag. Let me bring that back and we've got some extracurricular yeah. activity going on. I think it's going to be on Jerron Johnson myself on an illegal block on the return. Number 23 for Boise State. This is a Big Ten officiating crew. On the return illegal block in the back. Number 23 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Good eyes Timmy. Here it is there and that's well he had his helmet in front but they made the call so they're going to push Kyle Wilson after that punt return they're going to push him back.
The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on Fox is sponsored by Tostitos. Good times guaranteed. By the all-new Ram Heavy Duty Motor Trends 2010 Truck of the Year. And by AT&T, a better 3G experience. A beautiful night out here in the desert. The aerial coverage for tonight's game presented by Bud Light. It's a beautiful shot of the sunset. And the people from Boise are having a good time, though the offense hasn't gotten going. Kellen Moore 0 for 3 to start the game. Well, they've had the ball 32 seconds. They're up 7 nothing because of the pick 6 from Brandon Thompson. Jeremy Avery, who rushed for over 1,100 yards this year, stopped short of the line of scrimmage. Back to the 23, Kelly Griffin, the junior defensive tackle from Irving, Texas, made the stop. Well, and he started a couple of years ago as a true freshman. Didn't play a whole bunch last year. Now he's right back into it. Watch the penetration and then watch 43 behind him take Carter, clean it up. See, really good penetration right by Thomas Bird, forces the back to bounce, and then Avery's got nowhere to go with Carter there to clean it up. Tyler Shoemaker, number 89, and a wide receiver. Young takes the handoff on the end around. Titus Young with some running room. Is out of bounds up in the 41 yard line. And Titus Young is the kind of speed that they didn't have to deal with last year. But watch the block by Efa out here as Titus Young comes on the end around. There's 80 with the big block, Efa right out there on the corner. And then Burroughs with a nice block as well down the field. And, and again, back to Titus Young. He didn't play in the Point Seattle Bowl last year, and he is. The most electric guy offensively for Boise State when you talk about their weapons. Be tough for TCU to deal with tonight. Picked up 18 on that last carry. This is Avery bouncing off a tackle, getting up to the 47 yard line. Pickup of six for Jeremy Avery, a junior from Bellflower, California. Communications major as the band from Boise State plays on. There is Austin Pettis, who broke his leg in the last game of the regular season and has come back. He's limping a little bit, but they hope to get him in for a few plays during the tonight's game. Two running backs, Jeremy Avery and Doug Martin on the field. Martin goes in motion. Everybody out. Moore throwing short to Doug Martin. And is brought down. Good tackle on the play by Tank Carter. The linebacker number 43 and Doug Martin has just exploded onto the scene for Boise State the running back they had DJ Harper out there who was out there with with Avery and then Harper got hurt in the Fresno State game and when he went down Doug Martin who was playing really rover back and then the first three games out at safety had to step in and, and play running back and he's been an animal up over six yards of carry it's been a big shot in the arm for the running game for Boise State since Harper went down two tight ends in Kirby Moore Kellen Moore's younger brother is in at wide receiver as well everybody out Moore gets time completes to Titus Young down to the TCU 41 yard line on a first down good pass thrown by Kellen Moore pick up a 10 on the play Kellen Moore is so good at reading coverage I mean he, he sits in the shotgun he gets the ball and he already knows pre snap where he's going with it. He reads the defense. He can see what type of zone they're in, whether it's usually, and this team plays a lot of quarters, which is four deep. And then they get up and press on those wide receivers. Good read, good throw from Kellen Moore. And there's Austin Pettis on. Spread out with Titus Young. Moore takes a deep drop and throws deep. Going for Titus Young and a little too far. Well covered on the play by Nick Sanders, senior cornerback, who's the best cornerback right now on the field for TCU. And the, the, the receiver's open. Is he going to run a post route for Titus Young? He's going to break it off inside of Nick Sanders. He's open. And Kellen Moore just overthrows him. Both quarterbacks uh, definitely, Sam, with some nerves early in this game. You look at Andy Dalton, two for six to start the game. Kellen Moore, same thing, two for six when you look at his numbers. Second and ten for Boise State. With a 7 0 lead. Rush from the outside. Moore gets rid of it. Incomplete. Intended for Tyler Shoemaker. And the Boise State fans wanted a penalty call. Well, they're going to get it. And I think they're going to get it on Ibi uh, Loye, number nine. Watch him. 
Oh yeah, he definitely wrapped up Tyler Shoemaker and pulled him, and there is no call. I, th I thought I thought I saw a flag down on the field. Clearly, they didn't throw well. No, no call. It's on third and ten. Alex Abiloye, the linebacker covering Doug Martin in the backfield. Here's third and ten for the Broncos of Boise State. Everybody out. Pressure from Daniels. Chasing Moore who throws and completes to Titus Young. Inside the 20. First down for the Broncos of Boise State. 21 yard pickup. Here's the pressure from Daniels and Kellen Moore's got enough juice to get outside of the pocket, extend the play, and then Titus Young, who was the wide receiver split all the way out to the left, got down the sidelines and recognized that his quarterback was scrambling, did the right thing, put his cleat in the grass, and came back to the football. On first down, it's Avery trying to get outside. He does. And he's pushed out of bounds at the 16-yard line. There's a flag down at around the 12-yard line. And we'll check that out. Discussion amongst the officials. Illegal crackback block. Number three. 15 yard penalty. From the end of the run, first down. That's on freshman Chris Potter, who was in at wide receiver. Oh, yeah, you can't chop like that out in the open field. That's what they got him for. And takes the ball back to the 31 yard line. Titus Young of Boise State has two catches for 31 yards and has reached 1,000 yards receiving this season. Eighth time that's been done by a Boise State player. Two tight ends in. Moore gets time and completes it to Mitch Burrows. Down on the 22 yard line, Greg McCoy brought him down. Mitch Burrows, a freshman out of Meridian, Idaho. Kellen Moore just reading the safety, and he's going to look out to his left. And as soon as the free safety bailed out, he knew he had the slant route to, to Burroughs in front of the corner. And as soon as that the ball was snapped, you saw this safety bail out. He knew he had that slant route, read it perfectly. DJ Yendry, a freshman defensive tackle, is in. And around to Titus Young. And can't get to the outside. Well spread out by TCU. They stretched that play out and forced Titus Young out of bounds at the 26 yard line. Uh, it's hard to run on the perimeter against TCU. And I know Boise State has been good all year at getting guys out on the edge, out on the perimeter. But TCU has just got so much team speed defensively. Probably their best asset. And that guy right there, Daryl Washington, in my opinion, from watching the tape, one of the best linebackers in college football. He can fly. Washington, a senior out of Irving, Texas. And certainly a high draft pick consideration. People feel he'll be a possibly a second, maybe a late first. Everybody out. Kellen Moore throws underneath for the tight end. Efa. And he's tripped up at the 19-yard line by Tyler Luttrell. So the field goal kicking unit coming on now for Boise State. The penalty hurt. The crackback block. Penalty against Chris Potter. And then good defensive work by TCU forces a field goal. Kyle Brotsman, as you see, 17 of 23 this season. This will be a 36-yard try. On the way and wide. Brotsman missed it. Team Boise State fails to take advantage of good field position. And you can see the reaction of TCU coach Gary Patterson. Look, this, this defense gives up 12 points a game. You got to get points whenever you can. And here's the kick. The snap looks like it was good. Not a problem with the snap. There's the kick, just pushes it high and up to the right. And that was a problem, look, in the, in the Poinciana Bowl last year when you watched Boise State in that game. Now, they didn't move the ball 
very well up and down the field. They got out to an early lead, but they got down near the money zone or in the red zone, and they were not converting touchdowns. Chris Peterson told us that's a huge key in this game offensively. They get down near the red zone, they got to score a touchdown. Now from the 20, TCU with Andy Dalton handing off to Joseph Turner. And the senior running back picks up six on the play. Good work up front by the offensive line led by junior center Jake Kirkpatrick. These great overhead shots, by the way, are brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan like Tim Ryan, you've got to get DirecTV. I know Tim has it. I have it. Got to have it. Second and four. Dalton under center this time. And a handoff to Turner. And a first down for TCU. Joseph Turner. Veteran running back, nothing fancy about him, but a strong runner. Well, he's led TCU in rushing for three straight years, and, and I'll tell you what Boise State's going to do to counter that is they're playing with the bigger backers today, and instead of Hunter Smith being out there and uh, J.C. Percy being out there starting the game, we're going to see more of Aaron Tebis. We're going to see more uh, of Daryl Acri in there for Hunter White uh, and J.C. Percy at linebacker. And there's Tebis, number 36. First down, TCU. Off the fake, Dalton throws and completes it. Up to the 36-yard line of Bart Johnson. Bart Johnson has now caught a pass in 22 consecutive games. That's one of my favorite things about college football. The bands are great. We'll hear from the bands at halftime. Watch them perform. Well, the pageantry of it all. I love the passion of the kids. I mean, guys out there playing because Clearly they love the game for all the seniors going to be their last game in college football. It's a great atmosphere here tonight. Red shirt freshman Ed Wesley in. Off the play fake Dalton is hit by Wilson and it's recovered by the offensive lineman Marcus Cannon. Kyle Wilson blitzing from the corner. Well anytime you're on the hash it's going to be a short corner and look at him Sugar and Baton Powell. He's going to come unblocked on the short corner. There is not a receiver over there and it's a quarterback. When you read that defense and you say, okay, I don't have a receiver to my right, but I've got Kyle Wilson out there who's playing corner, you've got to have an alert that here comes the corner blitz. He never saw it. Kyle Wilson came and laid a shot on him, and Andy Dalton is clearly down having some issues. Hopefully, hopefully, Sam, he just got the wind knocked out of him. Gary Patterson comes on to check out what's going on with his quarterback. On the left, Andy Dalton, the quarterback of TCU, sitting up. On the right was the man with the hard hit on the blitz, Kyle Wilson, senior cornerback with a great play. And they never saw him. He's jumping around here. Watch 48, Luke Shivers. He comes back in motion. There's nobody to block the edge. Nobody. So the quarterback's got to be able to see that. There's no receiver to throw to, so here comes the corner on a cowboy blitz from the boundary. And that's just a great play by Kyle Wilson. That's the experience factor for that corner Kyle Wilson playing games with the quarterback and then exploiting it. Dalton goes to the sideline and in the quarterback is senior from Houston Texas Marcus Johnson his last game action was October the 31st Marcus Jackson 6 1 2 16 played in the game against UNLV. Jackson carries it. Good run up across the 35 yard line. Brought down by Chase Baker the defensive tackle a sophomore from Rockland California. Boise State does a lot of recruiting in California. And, and they're all over California. They're really all over the country now. When you think of since they got into that Fiesta Bowl and won it in, in 07 against Oklahoma, the recruiting pool just opened yes. wide open for Boise State. And a lot more people around the country, high school football players, are choosing now to go to Boise State. Anson Kelton's third punt of the game. This one's a short one, a wobbly one. Bounces in favor of TCU, and Kyle Wilson takes it out of bounds across the 30 yard line and talking about that recruiting pool and what they're doing Boise State right there southwest Idaho in the Treasure Valley a great great place and they got 20 from Idaho they got 36 from California six from Oregon six from Washington that being Kellen Moore one of those guys Arizona they're able to recruit down there and 
Six in the state of Texas, including George Iloka, who's a big player for Boise State, don't the for, safety. Don't forget Kyle Wilson from Piscataway, New Jersey. Chris Myers on the sideline. What's happening? Andy Dalton just got the wind knocked out of him, deflected any medical attention. He, there's not a scratch on his redhead. He'll be back in the game, Sam. Thank you, Jeremy Avery. Carrying up to the 33. They spotted the ball at the 28, a five yard pickup. Good report from Chris Myers updating Andy Dalton's status. Yeah, that's great news. And here, another good run. Watch the slant by the defensive line, and it's going to create a nice little running crease up inside. You see, Jerry Hughes slanted down inside. He got washed down. Take Carter. Tried to fill to the outside. He got walled off, pushed to the outside, and made a nice hole, a nice crease. For Jeremy Avery. Dylan Moore is 5 for 10, 48 yards. As his brother Kirby in motion starts to run, the little toss to Jeremy Avery trying to cut it back. TCU all over it. Good defensive work led by Kelly Griffin up front, the defensive tackle. Boy, he become you notice Kelly Griffin. I know the Hughes has the big reputation and the the star of the defense but Kelly Griffin does a good job inside. Well they're very solid along the front. You, you know you talk about Jerry Hughes Wayne Daniels very good at the other defensive end Corey Grant a first year starter second team all conference Kelly Griffin though short quick and thick six one about three hundred pounds He's doing a nice job in this game getting penetration. Doug Martin in the backfield Mitch Burrows motions comes the pressure Blitz coming it's picked up. Moore gets rid of it too high for Titus Young well covered by Greg McCoy McCoy a sophomore from Dallas Texas getting the start tonight with senior cornerback Raphael Priest unable to play McCoy can fly you got to be careful throwing those deep outs his way because if he gets one of those it's a house call in a heartbeat guy that's clocking that 40 at about 4 3 Boise State with a 7 nothing lead courtesy of a 51 yard interception touchdown return by Brandon Thompson second punt of the game for Kyle Bratzman Jeremy Curley is back deep good kick Curley goes back takes it at the 17 trying to find some running room but he slipped and goes down at the 26 yard line. Well, the regular season is over. The postseason begins this coming weekend. And we've got wild card action for you right here in Arizona on Sunday, beginning at 4 p.m., with a built for tough pregame show as the Arizona Cardinals host the Green Bay Packers. That should be a good one. Green Bay winning seven of their last eight. Yeah, they are red hot right now when you watch how they're playing. Arizona three and three in their last six. That's great news right there. Yeah. Andy Dalton getting back on the field for TCU. Dalton just three for seven for 18 yards as TCU has not gotten their offense in sync as yet. Matthew Tucker at running back. Flag on the play. Somebody moved on the offensive Both line. Start. Big Nick Richmond, number 79. Offense, yep. Five yard penalty. Still first down. At six foot eight inch, 322 pound Nick Richmond, a senior from Garland, Texas, and it's hard to miss him if he moves. Oh, he's huge. 16 starts coming into this game. He is just massive. And they're big up front, but he dwarfs everybody. First and 15 at the 21. Dalton quickly outside. And the catch made by Ryan Christian, a nice gain up to the 36, very close to a first down. It is a first down. Ryan Christian, a versatile receiver, running back, was a quarterback in high school. And we have come to the end of the first quarter of the 39th annual Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Defense, the story of the game thus far as Boise State has a 7-0 lead. We'll be back after these messages and a word from your local Fox station. Welcome back to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl in Glendale, Arizona. Sam Rosen, Tim Ryan, and Chris Myers. Glad you're with us. TCU starts from the 36 yard line with Matthew Tucker in the backfield and movement on the offensive line. Richmond again. I'm Both telling start, you the nerves. 79 offense. Five yard penalty. Still first down. 
and the noise and playing inside that is the fifth penalty on TCU in this football game. First and 15 for the Horn Frogs of TCU. Spread offense. Andy Dalton the quarterback now Matthew Tucker freshman running back shifts. Quick outside. And the completion to Ryan Christian was brought down short game on the play. Now it's time for tonight's Tostitos game summary. Thus far not much offense from either team. 73 yards for Boise State 57 for TCU. Quick outside and the completion to Antoine Hicks sophomore wide receiver with good speed and a dangerous dangerous man on the outside. Well he is a big play waiting to happen. You think about this season only 28 touches for Antoine Hicks coming into this game 10 touchdowns on the 28 touches. Pretty incredible when you look at it and, and six of them came through the air as a receiver four of them on the ground running. Two running backs in have to get to the 46 for a first down. Dalton gets time but nobody open. Now he throws and the ball is dropped by Bart Johnson incomplete. Johnson had a chance couldn't hold on well very good throw off the run because you're going to have pressure here from the outside and you're going to see Dalton escape out to the right and then he just throws a strike on the run to Bart Johnson who can't hold on to it right in between four defenders looked like he was already slipping Sam before the ball got there five possessions four have ended in punts for TCU one was intercepted and returned for a touchdown Kelton's kick a good high kick. Kyle Wilson at the 20 spins there's a flag on the play Wilson up to the 24 yard line this penalty will be against Boise State 42 yard punt and I think Brandon Thompson number 13 with an illegal block in the back. The Big Ten crew headed by Bill Lamagne. He was hitting Malcolm Williams in the back. There's no 15. foul on the play. The block in question was on the side. First right. down. So with the discussion, they pick up the flag. And it is a good call because you look at he's completely in front of him, and then there just gives him a little shove. Good non-call. And the human target was part of the festivities here at the Fiesta Bowl. The human target begins. January 17th on Fox a good looking show. Well I know where I'll have my crosshairs January 17th. <laughs> you could be the human target. Boise State from the 24 their fourth possession Doug Martin and Dan Paul in the backfield with Kellen Moore. Moore goes outside to Titus Young and a short pick up to the 26 yard line. Let's check in with Chris Myers on the sideline. Well Sam Tim Ryan mentioned Titus Young is the fastest player on this team and it's obvious that Chris Peterson wants to get him the football the fifth touch already for Young now in pregame warm ups Austin Pettis said he was about 80 percent coming off that broken left fibula and it affects some of the route running so look for Pettis to be the go to guy throughout the game for this Boise State offense. Thanks Chris. Titus Young's got 15 all-purpose touchdowns this season for Boise State. Doug Martin, he's quick through the hole. Good run. And that's got a first down for Boise State. Just short of the 35-yard line, T.J. Johnson Let's made go, the tackle for TCU. Very good block here by the center. He's going to cut and watch him get a knockdown, and then you'll see the cutback from the running back. See, he's got the backer right there. There's the key block, which gives the crease to Doug Martin. Very nice block from Thomas Bird on Darrell Washington. Hurry up offense as Moore works under center with two tight ends in. Martin again puts his head down and barrels forward to the 37. Last year, as Tim mentioned, when these two teams met in the Poinsettia Bowl in San Diego and TCU won, one of the big problems for Boise State was they couldn't run the ball. 
as you see 28 yards total last year already here in the first half they've exceeded that total well and think of, uh, of those 28 yards 20 of them came on one run a touchdown run by Ian Johnson Kirby Moore number 34 younger brother of the quarterback Kellen Moore is in at wide receiver Doug Martin slowed down in the backfield Jerry Hughes grabs him first he was slowed down by Kelly Griffin and Hughes stopped him bring up a third and long for Boise State TCU another program that has just exploded look at their recruiting pool deep in the heart go. of Texas absolutely and, and let me tell you something this program is no fluke they're built to win for a while but out to California up to Jersey but Texas is predominantly where they get most of their athletes and rightly so there's a bunch of great high school football players in the state of Texas with two tight ends in flag on the play Moore throws it's tipped caught by Titus Young and he is brought down by Alex Abiloye. The flag is against TCU. It looked like Jerry Hughes jumped offside. And that's just a great job by Kellen Moore understanding the situation. He's got a free play, and he can put up a risky throw as he did there to Titus Young. Offside Young's. defense, number 98. That penalty's declined. Play results, first down. Jerry Hughes does it again. Here he is. He's going to come off quick, jumps into the neutral zone, and then here's the throw right there. High risk throw over the middle over Daryl Washington in front of Ibiloye. And Titus Young comes down with a great job by the quarterback, knowing the situation that he had a free one. Pick up a 30 on the play. The end of the round to Titus Young, who's doing it all for Boise State. Short pick up here. Out of bounds, just shy of the 30 yard line. Jason Teague took him out. Uh, Titus is and we've been talking about him and clearly he's the number one weapon for Boise State offensively especially without Austin Pettis out there who also had 14 touchdowns you look at Titus Young the guys 144 yards a game all purpose offensively clearly the guy that TCU's got to stop tonight Austin Pettis comes on Titus Young to the sideline four catches 63 yards spread offense more being rushed by Jerry Hughes who hit him as he threw big time pressure by the senior defensive end from Sugarland, Texas, Jerry Hughes. Well, now you get you get an indication of his four five and the 40 speed. He just flies off the corner. Jerry Hughes, much decorated, two time All American, the winner of the Ted Hendricks Award and the Lot Trophy, the Mountain West Defensive Player of the Year. 28 and a half career sacks, 11 and a half this season, and likely a first round draft pick. Avery and Martin in the backfield. Pettis went in motion. Kellen Moore has time and throws short and completes it to Chris Potter down to the 25 yard line. It's going to bring up a fourth down. You see a lot of those shallow crossing routes against TCU, which gives these safeties opportunities for big hits. Watch this one by Latrell. Oh. Now, Tyler Latrell will come hit you now, the safety for, for TCU. And after missing a field goal try earlier, Boise State will go for it here at the 25 on fourth and three. Chandler Koch, number 88, is in. Normally a blocking Time tight end. Now a timeout Boise for Boise State. First team timeout. Boise State with a 7 0 lead. A big fourth and three coming. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl is sponsored by Verizon Football Zone. With live games and highlights from conferences like the Big Ten right on your phone, only on VCast from Verizon Wireless. And by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Oh, what a great sight that is. The aerial coverage for tonight's game presented by Bud Light. Great weather outside, inside. We welcome you into the University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona for the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. As Boise State goes for it at fourth and three, passing up a 42-yard field goal try. Kellen Moore gets time. 
Throws for Austin Pennis. Goes up and makes the grab at the 20-yard line. That's a first down. Coming back from the broken leg, Austin Pettis, the top receiver for Boise State, goes up and makes the catch for a first down. Well, good to see him involved in the game plan, and it, quarterback's going to put it up high, and Austin Pettis has the ability to go up and get it. Good throw from Kellen Moore, understanding the one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. Also a very good job in blitz pickup by Doug Martin. Block and Tyler Luttrell. Wildcat formation, Kellen Ward split out wide, and it's taken by the running back, Jeremy Avery, and he's brought down at the 17-yard line. Little different formation for Boise State. Yeah, and they call it their wild, and everybody in the NFL, it's the Wildcat, and it's the old version of the old single wing. I don't know about that formation there, the way they set it up, but they call it the wild. Good job defending it in terms of the perimeter, not letting Avery get to the outside. 11th play of the drive for Boise State. He's done a good job controlling the football. They have to put points on the board. They haven't done it offensively yet. A little shovel pass to Doug Martin. Doesn't gain anything. Flag down. The Horn Frog fans. Check out the penalty call. Against Boise State. Illegal formation offense. Five men in the backfield. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Bring the ball back to the 23 yard line. Austin Pettis comes back in. A big factor for Boise State is they're just keeping the ball away from TCU. They've done a great job. Yeah, they're owning time of possession right now. They got an advantage by about four minutes. Four wide receivers in. Everybody out. Pressure by Jerry Hughes. The throw too high. Tried to get it to Austin Pettis. Double covered. The Nissan dual threat in tonight's game is Boise State wide receiver Titus Young. 63 yards receiving, 16 yards rushing. The Nissan dual threat brought to you by Nissan Maxima, where the sophistication of a sedan and the performance of a sports car come together as one. Five runs, six passes on this drive for Boise State. Doug Martin in the backfield. Everybody out. Kellen Moore puts it up for Chris Potter and missed him. Potter had a little room as he headed for the sideline. And now the field goal kicking unit comes on. Yeah, Potter, it looks wide open to me. Kellen Moore is just not on his game. Usually very, very accurate. He's just got the nerves working right now, just stretched out in front of Potter. He laid out, gave maximum effort to get it. Just no chance because that ball was thrown too wide. Hunter White is the holder. Botsman will attempt a 39-yard field goal. Missed from 36 earlier. This one he's got right down the middle. First offensive point scored by the Broncos of Boise State. They have a 10-0 lead on TCU. the electricity of the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Now TCU down by 10. They need something here. They send Jeremy Curley and Ryan Christian deep to receive Kyle Brotsman's kickoff. Curley, a dangerous return man. How about the contrast in place? 30 plays for Boise State, 18 for TCU. The kick coming down to Ryan Christian at the four. And ran into his own man, was brought down at the 20-yard line. 
This February, American sport comes home as NASCAR goes back to its roots with racing like it's meant to be. And it all starts with the great American race. The 2010 season of NASCAR on Fox begins February 14th with the Daytona 500, the greatest race of them all. Let's go down to the field with Chris Myers. Chris, what do you got? Well, Sam, the center for TCU, Jake Kirkpatrick, uh, huddled his offensive lineman in the last series, said enough already with the penalties of the noise. Get it together. They practiced indoors at TCU and piped up the crowd, but nothing like what they're hearing here. Kirkpatrick's the leader. Thanks, Chris. Blitz coming. It's picked up. Pass to Christian, and Kyle Wilson pulls him out of bounds up at the 30-yard line, very close to the first down line. Officially, the field goal by Brodsman was 40 yards. Initially, they had indicated 39. Officially, a 40-yard field goal for Kyle Brodsman of Boise State. Second and one for the Horn Frogs of TCU as they try to get going offensively. Quarterback sneak. Dalton is shoved back, but he got enough for the first down. Came across the 30-yard line. Led by Jake Kirkpatrick, the junior center, who's the only married player on the team. He's the guy who gives them experience and maturity. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and he's really a first year starter. You talk about flourishing in year number one as a starter. He's had a huge, huge season in his leadership, Sam, and you just, Chris talked about it. It's been incredibly good for that offensive line. Dalton steps up to let the line know. Three wide receivers. They go inside of Joseph Turner. And Turner with good power. Carries up across the 35-yard line. Pick up a five on the play. Boise State's got some of their backups out there in terms of their defenders on the defensive line right now. And you can see TCU's getting push. I mean, on that run right there, you saw all the purple surge forward for about three or four yards against that front. And try to figure out the signals. Marcus Cannon turning to his quarterback. Looked like he was trying to read his lips. Can't hear. Four wide receivers in. Well, the ball is dropped by Dalton, and he falls on top. Back to the 25-yard line. It didn't seem like too high of a snap, but Dalton didn't seem to be ready for it. It's just poor execution early in this game for, for TCU. That, there was nothing wrong with that snap. It was perfect. Jake Kirkpatrick and just went up and threw his hands. So now the ball back to the 25. They've got to get to the 41 for a first down. And listen, they're no slouch offensively. Give Boise State some credit. They're playing great on defense. TCU's a top five offense in college football. Blitz coming. It's picked up. Dalton throws to Ryan Christian. Trying to spin away, but couldn't do it. Good tackle by George Iloka. Sophomore from Houston, Texas, who used to compete with Jerry Hughes when Hughes was a running back in Houston. Well, and a very good tackle by George Iloka. They're going to send the blitz, and then they're going to play zone behind it. And Iloka's just there waiting for it. It looked like Christian had the edge on him as he tried to spin outside, but Iloka reached out and got his leg and didn't let go and got him down. Kelton with his fifth punt. Oh, good high kick. Boomer. Kyle Wilson has it go over his head, and it bounces out of bounds. What a kick by Anson Kelton. Out of bounds at the four yard line. 65 yard punt. Pins Boise State back deep, but Boise State has a 10 0 lead. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on Fox is sponsored by Nissan Maxima, proud partner of the Heisman Trophy. By Tostitos, good times guaranteed. And by Cisco, welcome to the human network. These great overhead shots are brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. And here we have had some great shots. Right now, Boise State offense comes on. 
starting from the four yard line after a 65 yard punt. See how much they trust Kellen Moore with his back against the wall against this big time defense. Moore goes back into the end zone to throw and he puts it up deep for Titus Young and it's broken up. Covered by Greg McCoy. They've been battling throughout the game. Two guys with a lot of speed. I guess they trust Kellen Moore. He drops back and throws a takeoff <laughs> route down the sideline. Really a good throw, but better defense by McCoy. Look at that. Titus Young, more yards than TCU's offense right now. Second and ten. Jeremy Avery and Dan Paul in the backfield. As Moore works under center. Avery, there's a hole there. They closed up in a hurry, but a good pickup up to the eight yard line. Let's check in with Chris Myers again. Chris. Sam, Tim, one of the adjustments Gary Patterson has made is he's put his fastest defensive back, Rec McCoy, we're just talking about, who runs a 4 3 2 40, and he's trying to match him up wherever Titus Young goes when he's in the game. It's a way to kind of neutralize the speed, or at least put speed on speed. Thanks, Chris. As we mentioned, Raphael Priest, normally the starting quarterback, a senior, unable to play, and McCoy getting the start. Two tight ends in on third and six. Watch out for Titus Young right here. Moore with time. He's got an open man. It's Chris Potter. Comes down with a first down at the 24 yard line. McCoy was covering. Good route. Run by Chris Potter, a freshman out of Westlake Village, California. Well, and a very good job. Look at that. It's a very catchable ball as Kellen Moore put it up. And that's, he said his dad taught him that when he was young and he was ball boy out there for his dad at Prosser High School. His dad was a coach. He said, you got to throw a catchable ball and obviously taught him about pocket presence as well. I mean, just look at him drift to the right, find an open passing lane and throw a perfect football. Mitch Burrows in motion. Blitz coming. In trouble is Moore. He puts it up. Way downfield for Titus Young. Incomplete. And a flag on the play. There was contact with Jason Teague. Titus Young looked like he was playing defense and he pulled Teague back. Let's watch here. Looks like Teague's going for the ball and then Titus Young pulls it back. I think that's yeah. offensive pass, pass interference. interference. Defense. Whoa. 27. Wow. 15 yard penalty. Previous spot. Automatic. First down. 15 yard penalty in college football. Pass interference. Well, you, you look at T. He's got his eyes on the ball. That's completely incidental contact. Inadvertent tangling of the feet. And it looked like Titus Young pulled him backwards. Wow. I disagree with that call. I think that's offensive pass interference. A break for Boise State. As they get the call, it's first down at their own 39 yard line with Jeremy Avery, the running back. Kellen Moore quickly outside of his bows, and he's brought down right away. Good tackle by Greg McCoy. No gain on the play. A really good job by McCoy, just evading the block of, of Shoemaker and just slipped right by him and got the tackle right on the line of scrimmage. Kellen Moore 11 for 21 106 yards passing coming up the Reese's halftime show Chris Rose Jimmy Johnson Eddie George will have first half analysis the Boise State and TCO TCU bands will play for you hope you'll stay tuned for that and of course we got the Fox Sports ticker up to the second scores and stats. Moore rushed throw short to Titus Young all over him is Darrell Washington. Washington the senior linebacker from Irving Texas with a good play Kellen Moore just described as a football junkie a youngster who started playing quarterback at age nine as you mentioned his dad Tom Moore was the coach of, of Kellen and his brother Kirby in high school and Kellen would just look at tapes and know what so plays were going on. How old were you when you started reading defenses? Oh, about 10. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Kirby Moore is in along with Tyler Shoemaker for Boise State on third down. Throwing short, it's batted down. Terry Hughes, who was being blocked, got up and batted it down. Good play by Hughes. 
Well, and he's used to doing that too because he play. He's such a good pass rusher that if you're going to block him one on one, the quarterback's usually going to get it out quick because he's going to beat a guy. Oh, he just saw. He saw and felt Doug Martin getting out for that little flare route. He just backed off the pass rush, got his hands up, and almost got an interception. For Boise, they got out from the shadow of their own goalpost with a couple of first downs, one on the penalty. So Brotsman set to punt it away. Third punt of the game, Jeremy Curley, who has two punt returns for a touchdown this season. Line drive. Uh-oh. Curley's got it. Picks up a couple of blocks and is tripped up. Falls forward to the 38 yard line. Tomorrow, our bold bash continues here on Fox with the FedEx Orange Bowl. The Iowa Hawkeyes taking on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Our coverage of the FedEx Orange Bowl begins at 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific in high definition only on Fox. And Chris Myers, after he's done with all the ceremonies tonight, will get on a plane and go to Florida. Sam, this offense has got to get a little momentum here. They got to get some positive yeah. things going before halftime offensively. Keeping it as Andy Dalton gets up to the 40. What's giving TCU problems with the Boise defense? Well, I think a couple of things. Number one, they, they haven't been able to convert on third down. They are 0 for 5 on third down, so they have been unable to continue the drives. But I think Boise State is in the head of Andy Dalton. I think he's got him off balance, doing a great job. I think Wilcox, the coordinator, is doing terrific work. Switching up the coverages, showing different zone looks. Russian three, Russian six on the blitz. Gary completes to Antoine Hicks, and he's got a first down. Hicks did a good job spinning away and getting into Boise territory. A pickup of 12 on the play. And they've just kept him off balance, just switching it up. Russian three, dropping eight. Russian six, dropping five. TCU. And Andy Dalton hasn't been able to figure it out. TCU has two timeouts remaining. First time they've been in Boise State territory. Three man rush, flag on the play, and the pass dropped by Jeremy Curley. He was covered by Kyle Wilson, a little behind Curley, but this is going to be an offside on Boise State. Yeah, it's Winterswike, I think, in the neutral zone, number 98. Offside, defense, number 98, five yard penalty, remains first down. Chris Peterson, the head coach of Boise State who was a player at Cal Poly when Gary Patterson, Patterson was a linebackers coach at Cal Davis excuse me inside handoff to Ed Wesley and he's got enough for the first down Wesley's first carry inside the 38 clock running hurry up offense for TCU Boise State's just getting three on the line of scrimmage they're going to try to keep it all in front of them four wide receivers everybody out the pass complete to Jimmy Young his first catch of the game Young pulled out of bounds close to the 30 yard line TCU trailed at halftime only once this season that was at Clemson TCU that was the third game of the season they came back to win that game 14 to 10 four wide receivers Wesley the running back Curley in motion Dalton gets time he throws deep he's got a man Clay has got it touchdown TCU Curtis Clay, a junior out of Lockhart, Texas, taking in the pass from Andy Dalton. A big score by TCU in the final minute of the first half. And it's just a slant and go. Curtis Clay comes off to the inside. Brandon Thompson was playing on the inside, and then he went out and just took off. Yeah, they're going to get Brandon Thompson, it looks like, down in the end zone with a face mask. But that was a sluggo. Slant and go for Curtis Clay, the leader of that wide receiver group. And a perfect play, perfect throw from Andy Dalton. TCU really needed this big play, this momentum going in at halftime. 30 yard touchdown pass from Dalton to Clay. Ross Evans for the extra point. And he puts it.
puts it right through. Boise State's lead is cut to 10 to 7 late in the first half. Andy Dalton coming up with a big play. Well, what a super read by him. There's the key right there, the safety. As he moves over, he knows he's got man on the outside. There's the slant, and he pump fakes it. Curtis Clay is able to run away from Brandon Thompson for the touchdown. But the key was Andy Reid, or Andy um, Dalton, excuse me, making the right read, seeing the safety go to the middle of the field. Sammy knew he had the one-on-one -on -one matchup he wanted on the perimeter. Because of the face mask penalty, TCU will kick off from the 45-yard line. Kevin Sharples will kick it off for the Horn Frogs. Back deep, and it's brought out by Titus Young. And he is brought down short of the 10. He gambled. But Tanner Brock, the younger of the Brock brothers, was in on the tackle. <laughs> Don't forget, coming up on the Reese's halftime show, Chris Rose, Jimmy Johnson, Eddie George. We'll have first half analysis. We'll also watch and hear from the Boise State and TCU bands. A great part of college football. So stay tuned for the Reese's halftime show. Kellen Moore under center. Jeremy Avery carrying. And he's stopped at the 11-yard line. Each team with two timeouts remaining. As the clock winds down. Andy Dalton. TCU needed a spark offensively, and Andy Dalton gave him to, gave it to them. Quick strike offense for TCU. Five plays, they went 62 yards in the big touchdown pass. Well, like I said, I mean they, they are certainly capable of finding their groove and putting plays up in a hurry. They're 40 points a game during the season. TCU with the favorites coming in. Couldn't get their offense going until the end of the first half. Boise State got a big interception. Touchdown return by Brandon Thompson. 51 yards. They put up three points offensively. That's all. But Boise State has the lead. The Horn Frogs huddle on the field before they head for the locker room. Andy Dalton feeling good at the end of the half as TCU gets on the board. The Reese's halftime show is coming up next. scoring teams in the nation locked in a defensive struggle Tim and it's been interesting to see how they battle back and forth well they have and I'm with you I think both defenses have been outstanding here in the first half of this football game we knew about TCU they're the best defense in the nation we knew they'd come in and play well I got to tell you though I'm a little surprised and particularly impressed with Boise State and what they've done on defense I mean they have made big plays all over the place and take a look here I mean you see Kyle Wilson with a nice pass breakup right there. Now you're going to see Brandon Thompson. He's going to undercut a slant route. He's going to make a house call, take that back for six points. Kyle Wilson coming off the boundary on a sack, and then a couple of big run stops. That one on Turner, and then another one here on Turner. Boise State defensively really has done a very good job, also in the pass game, of tackling in space. Because Andy Dalton has unloaded a lot of the footballs underneath versus that zone, and Boise State is really rattled up. Uh, rallied up, excuse me, and been very effective with their tackling. Let's check in with Chris Meyer, see what he has for halftime. Chris. Sam and Tip, Chris Peterson just said he's not surprised the defenses have dominated. He needs Kellen Moore. He just said he has to step up. He led the nation in passing efficiency, but he didn't face a defensive line as big as the one that he's looking at at TCU. It's
it's affecting some of his passes and his accuracy. Gary Patterson, his horse, losing his voice already, said his team was tight in the first half, said that he thought his team worked them too hard in practice leading up to this game, and he said, if we get the ball, we're going to run it more in the second half and try and wear down their defense, and he said he's not going to adjust his secondary for Titus Young, but they will be aware of where he is. Sam, Tim? Thanks very much, Chris. Boise State will get the kickoff to start the second half, but I'm wondering about that late touchdown for TCU and the effect it'll have on the Horn Frogs and their offense when they get the ball. Well, that's huge momentum and confidence for them. They could not get anything going. Andy Dalton was confused, it looked like, early in the first half and just what he was seeing found his groove. Titus Young and Doug Martin deep. The ball bounces. Titus Young takes it at the 10. Picks up a couple of blocks. Trying to get outside. A little cut in behind one of the defenders and Titus Young goes down at the 32. Now it's time for tonight's Ford first half stats. Total yards pretty close. The Very even. Of Boise this, State. this is the one right here now. 28 rushing yeah. yards for TCU a team that's up over 250 yards every game on the ground and they rolled Be uh, Boise State last year in the bowl game for over 270 yards. Not as effective today on the ground. Don't forget that one turnover that was huge touchdown. because it was right. a touchdown for Boise State. Jeremy Avery and Don Paul in the backfield. Kellen Moore, the quarterback under center. It's Avery. Got a good block from Paul. Short pickup. Darrell Washington comes up to make the tackle. Well, he is an outstanding tackler. He leads his defense in tackling, and you're just not going to get away from that guy in space. There was a few examples in the first half where he's just not going to stay block long. He'll disengage, and then in the open field, you're not going to be able to shake him because of his athleticism. Two backs in for Boise State, but they split one of them. Doug Martin out to the left. Jeremy Avery in the backfield. As they line up Wildcat. They step it to Avery. He hands to Martin. There's a good hole. Martin gets up to the 41 yard line. They've used that Wildcat formation a couple of times. That's a pickup of eight. Real nice job by Tyler Luttrell, who's going to be out to the right of your screen, the safety. And you'll see him. He's going to force it all back inside. There's him. It goes back inside. Now, this safety, the deep safety, is going to stay at home. TJ Johnson comes out. That's just perfect defense from everybody out there on the perimeter. Kellen Moore back in third and one and the toss to Avery behind Don Paul he's tackled for a loss by Darrell Washington the senior linebacker does it again for TCU well just a great job just keying and diagnosing keys the play and then shoots it diagnoses what it is and then he goes and finishes you get a good Example right there at his speed in the open field. He just ran the alley and prevented the running back from picking up the first down. That's a big time play. Excellent defensive series for TCU, led by Darrell Washington. Three and out for Boise State. This is Kyle Brotsman's fourth punt of the game. And a timeout, timeout. has been called TCU. by TCU. Gary Patterson's team comes over to the sideline. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on Fox is sponsored by DirecTV. No one else has all your favorite channels in HD. By The Home Depot, more saving, more doing. That's the power of The Home Depot. And by Merrill Lynch Wealth Management. Well, we've got some great shots outside the stadium. The aerial coverage for tonight's game presented by Bud Light. Inside the stadium, a good battle going on between Boise State number six in the BCS rankings TCU number four both undefeated teams that's Jeremy Curley who has two punt returns for touchdowns this season standing at his own 22. How about those blood red stripes on their helmets for this game they won them they've worn them one other time this season it was in their home game that big matchup against Utah. Brotsman. Looks like they're trying to draw TCU offside. Couldn't do it. Brotsman gets it away toward the sideline. And it bounces out of bounds at the 23. That's a great punt by Kyle Brotsman. 
TCU back in the 30s, a powerhouse in college football. The legendary Dutch Meyer won two national championships with two legendary quarterbacks, Sling and Sammy Waugh in 1935. Led TCU to a Sugar Bowl win, and then it was Davey O'Brien, the 1938 Heisman Trophy winner, leading the Horn Frogs to a Sugar Bowl win and another title in 1938. The glory days of TCU. Well, and this is the most wins for this TCU team since 1938. Out of the shotgun, Dalton handing to Joseph Turner. Now, TCU, we thought, would run the ball well with three excellent running backs in Turner, Wesley, and Tucker. They haven't run the ball well at all. No, they haven't. And, and I think you look at the defensive line for Boise State, and Ryan Winterswike leads that group, and he is really a neat story. I mean, he's two-time. All whack. He came to Boise State as a walk on, a gray shirt, a guy that really wasn't even invited and came and, and walked on, started at safety. They moved him to linebacker, said, you know what, go down to the D line. He has really developed into a legitimate defensive lineman. On the quarterback draw, Dalton is brought down. Good tackle coming up from the outside by Jerron Johnson, the safety, number 23. He spread it, the wide receivers out, four wide outs, and Dalton tried the quarterback draw. Big third down play for the Horn Frogs at TCU. Everybody out. Dolphin throws and a diving catch by Jeremy Curley for a first down at the 36 yard line. Good catch by Curley. A junior from Hutto, Texas. And good throw from Dalton because he had pressure right in his face. As you see right there and he just unloads it and Curley was able to run away from Winston Venable. That was McClellan that had the pressure on Andy Dalton. Andy just moved just enough. And that, and look, a lot of quarterbacks are accurate, but the quarterbacks that are accurate with pressure in their face are the good ones. That was a terrific throw from Dalton. The handoff inside to Joseph Turner picks up a couple of yards. That was also the first third down conversion in the game for TCU. I would expect Andy Dalton before long to, to keep one of those zone replays himself. I mean, you really see Boise State crashing down on the running back as he sticks it in the belly of the back. Boise State really converges down and tries to pinch down to the line of scrimmage to stop that inside run. I would expect Andy Dalton to put that in the belly of Turner here pretty quick, pull it back out and run it himself. Luke Shivers, a fullback, lines up his tight end left. Off the play fake, Dalton throws and completes it. To Curtis Clay, who caught the touchdown pass, and that's another first down for TCU up at the 48 yard line. Gary Patterson needs to keep the water in there to keep his voice alive. Pickup of nine. It's not uncommon for Gary Patterson to lose his voice, as Chris Byers told us. Two tight ends in. First down, TCU. Freshman Ed Wesley in the backfield. Play fake. Dawson's got it and throws wide of Jimmy Young, the intended receiver. Last year, TCU's offense in the Poinsettia Bowl against Boise State dominated with 472 yards. Tonight, they haven't been sharp at all. Well, and I think Boise State feels like they're better on defense. Just talking to Kyle Wilson the other day, I said, where are you guys better? He said, we just got a great understanding of where everybody fits. We didn't have that understanding of the big picture of the scheme last year in that bowl game. We have it now. Sophomore Jonathan Jones, number 83, in at wide receiver. Quick pass outside to Mark Johnson. He slowed down and ridden down by Winston Venable. Number 17. Uh, we talk about TCU speed on defense. Boise State's got it too. Watch all the white jerseys showing up. First, it's going to be I Loca. He's going to force the cutback on Bart Johnson. Now here comes Venable. There, then Winter Swipe. Then Aaron Tevis. And then Jerron Johnson, the leading tackler on the defense, is going to come in late. These guys will swarm to the football with the best of them. Know that Venable name? His dad 
played for the San Francisco Giants. His brother plays for the San Diego Padres, Terry Venable. Curtis Clay and Ryan Christian, the wide receivers. Here's third down. Dalton's pass incomplete. Again, throwing wide of Curtis Clay, who was well covered by Kyle Wilson. And TCU is forced to punt. Well, they had man coverage that time, and they've done a really good job. And Wilcox, Justin Wilcox, the defensive coordinator, is switching up the looks. Talked about it in the first half. That time they brought blitz. They brought two extra rushers, had man coverage out on the edge. And Dalton did not, the receiver and Dalton did not get on the same page. There's Big Anson Kelton, his sixth punt. He's at a 65 yarder. This one a high, short one, waving for a fair catch. Kyle Wilson takes it at the 17. Boise State with a good defensive stand continues to lead 10 7. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on Fox is sponsored by Tostitos. Good times guaranteed. Back at the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. It's time now for the Taco Bell Impact Players of the Game. Titus Young, eight touches in the game, 76 yards. And Brandon Thompson, the quarterback with a 51-yard interception, returned for a touchdown. Tonight's Taco Bell Impact Players of the Game thus far. Second possession, second half for Boise State, starting from the 17. With Martin and Dan Paul in the, in the backfield. Martin finds a hole. Gets up to the 25 yard line. Good run by Doug Martin. TJ Johnson made the tackle. Watch the inside push from this offensive line and how they're moving TCU off the ball. And that Will Lawrence. Now they're going right away, Tim. We'll get back to that in a minute. But they went no huddle. And Doug Martin carried again, comes up a half yard short of the first down. Sorry to interrupt no, that's your right. analysis. I, I, no, it's fine. I just think <laughs> Will Lawrence and those inside players, Thomas Bird, Kevin Sapien, they played well early in this game. We saw in the in the first half, Thomas Bird had a terrific block for a big pop up the middle, and that time it was Will Lawrence who had a good block on the defensive tackle. Boise has had two good offensive possessions in this game. They've had two 13 play drives. One ended in a missed field goal. One ended in a made field goal. I think it's just a matter of time before Kellen Moore finds his groove. Half yard short. As you can see, it'll bring up third. Because I'm telling you, he, he's had guys open. We saw earlier in the game when Titus Young was wide open on a, on a post route, he overthrew him. Chris Potter down in the red zone where he threw it too far out uh, and too wide where the receiver couldn't get it. He's had open guys. He's the number one rated quarterback in college football in terms of efficiency. He's going to find his stride here in the second half. Now he's gone to the field side. The wide the wider side of the field to get pick up his yardage. Where they haven't had success is out on the perimeter when they've tried to get anything really outside the tackles. In the run or the pass game because of the speed of the TCU defense. Byron how the defensive end is in as a blocker. And the carry by Martin. And he's got a first down. TJ Johnson the tackle, but Doug Martin picks up the first down. Well, he's got to deal with Byron Hout and the running back. Here's TJ right here, and watch this fill like a missile. Oh. <laughs> And he's really the guy that's, that's got to play great today. When you look at Boise State and all the stuff they do offensively with all the formations, number three right there, T.J. Johnson in this second half. He's got to be the communicator to keep everybody on the same page. Off the play fake. Kellen Moore puts it up wide open. Kyle Leaf on the tight end. And he's out of bounds in TCU territory at the 42-yard line. Good play fake, good pass thrown to Kylie for sophomore tight end from Boise. Well, and he's going to run a corner route on quarters coverage, which means four deep. And you saw right there, and he just wide open. McCoy jumped the post, got himself out of position. And I told you about that accuracy from Kellen Moore. And he lasered that right into Kyle Leaf, a perfect throw. Pickup of 28 on the play. Efa, the pass catching tight end. Tommy Gallardo, the blocking tight end. 
Out of the shotgun, Doug Martin wrapped up. Good penetration started by Tyler Luttrell that slowed him down. The ball came loose. But I believe he was ruled down. And Tank Carter just blew that up. And no, they got it's it. ruled yep. a fumble recovered by TCU. He never hit the ground. Looked like he was on top of the defender when the ball got ripped out. There's the hit there. He's Jerry Hughes has him. He's going down. He's still sitting on top of Jerry Hughes, so he's not down. There is nothing about Doug Martin that was down or ruled down. He is right on top of Jerry Hughes, and then that ball gets ripped out by Nuate. This game will be, uh, this play will be reviewed. All reviews come from upstairs, and the replay official will check it out on the fumble ruled on the field. Reviews initiated from upstairs. Decision made by the replay official upstairs. Yeah, and I think this is going to be a fumble. Jerry Hughes and Nuate. It looked like Hughes was actually the guy that ripped Following it out. The, review. the ruling of a fumble has been confirmed. First down, TCU. First turnover of the game for Boise State. The Horn Frogs at TCU take over. Jerry Hughes with a great play. Well, it was an awesome play because he's going to wrap him up and then he's going to rip at it, but it's Hughes' body that's on the ground, which doesn't allow Doug Martin to touch down anywhere. And the play's still alive. And then Henry Duete came in to finish it off. Happy defense on the sideline. Now the offense goes to work from the 43. Turner is tripped up. Good defensive play up front by number 99, Michael Atkinson, a freshman from Windsor, Ontario, who is known as Canadian Bacon. <laughs> they went up to scout oh, someone else great. and they saw him playing in Windsor. They do some scouting in Canada. And sure enough, they do recruiting up there and they found Michael Atkinson, a 332 pound freshman nose tackle. Dolphin throws short, completes to Jimmy Young. Nice move against Brandon Thompson, and then he's taken out by George Iloka. In Boise territory, down close to the 42-yard line, a 14-yard pickup. Well, and that's the key. Look, if you're going to play off coverage, Andy Dalton's going to read the defense. He's just going to get it out, and then you've got to come up and tackle. And that time, he fired it immediately to Jimmy Young, and Jimmy made a nifty little move to shake down uh, Brandon Thompson to pick up extra yards and get the first. Andy Dalton, 15 of 22, 135 yards, one touchdown, one interception. TCU on the move, trailing by three. Quick outside, Jeremy Curley. Curley ridden out of bounds by Brandon Thompson at the 38-yard line. A pickup of five on the play. Let's check in with Chris Myers. Chris. Sam, we're seeing a different Andy Dalton comp by his coach and the coaching headsets working here in the second half. Now, Dalton, according to his teammates, during the year when the team was on the road at Clemson, trailing 10-7 in the second half in a driving rainstorm, rallied the team on an 86-yard drive. They took the lead. His confidence has never been higher, and his teammates say it was a turning point. It appears he's continuing that at this moment. Jonathan Jones in at wide receiver. The pass to Jeremy Curley. He avoided Kyle Wilson. Great move by Curley, and Winston Venable finally brought him down at the 16-yard line of Boise State. This is too easy right now for Boise State, and Andy Dalton is just going to take what the defense gives him. And look at the cushion that Kyle Wilson has here. He's come over to the field, going to have a clear-out route there, and that's just too easy. See there, Curtis Clay on the clear out route. Kyle Wilson with too big of a cushion. He can't get there. And then again, he misses the tackle. And Curley's able to pick up the extra yards, and they've got it down into the red zone. Game 22 on the play. Two tight ends in. Matthew Tucker in the backfield. Dalton still got it, and he's brought down. That was nice penetration on the play by Aaron Tevis, sophomore linebacker out of Tucson, Arizona. Close to home for Aaron Tevis, a finance major, who made the stop on Andy Dalton. 
Big test now. The Boise State defense. As their 10-7 lead is in jeopardy. Fullback steps back. Dolphin on the quarterback draw. Trying to get outside. Good tackle on the play by Jerron Johnson. Junior from Compton, California. Jerron Johnson making the play. Well, and he was a middle linebacker. Here he is here. He was a middle linebacker in high school. You can see his instincts. He's reading the quarterback. And he just got up and as Andy Dalton tried to get to the perimeter, it was it was not happening. With Jerron Johnson, the number one tackler on this defense. They have to get to the six-yard line for a first down. Tucker, the running back, splits out on the empty backfield. Quick outside to Matthew Tucker. And he's wrestled down at the seven-yard line by Aaron Tevis. Another good play by sophomore linebacker Aaron Tevis. Well, and that's the key, and we've been talking about it this drive. If, if you're gonna you're gonna play off and soft and let Andy Dalton just get it out in about a second and a half, you've got to rally up and make tackles. It's a really good job there by Aaron Tevis. Ross Evans comes on as TCU will attempt. A field goal from 29 yards out. Evans 14 for 17 this season. And the kick is right through. And the game is tied. So the Horn Frogs of TCU, who were down 10 early, have come back to tie the game. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl is sponsored by the Ford F-150, built Ford Tough by H&R Block. For all of your tax questions, click, call, or come over. H&R Block, get it right. And by AT&T, a better 3G experience. These great overhead shots capturing the atmosphere here in tonight's game are brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. TCU tying the game after being down 10 nothing in the first half. Kevin Sharples teeing it up. Sharples a junior from the Woodlands Texas. TCU Sam came out on defense and their best players that last drive made great plays. I mean Darrell Washington in this second half has been everywhere and then it was Jerry Hughes that had the big tackle and the forced fumble. Titus Young from the four. He's quick, but he's brought down across the 25 to 27. Well, to vote for Mark Ingram or any of the other AT&T All-America candidates, text VOTE to 345-345 on your AT&T wireless phone or go to foxallamerica.com for more information. You could win a trip to next year's national championship game. Find out the AT&T All-America Player of the Year winner during the BCS National Championship game on January 7th. Give the D lineman a little love, will you? All those guys get all the <laughs> awards. How about Sue in Nebraska? Oh, he's special. Jeremy Avery in the backfield. The play fake by Kellen Moore. Throws to his brother Kirby. Their first connection of the game up to the 31 yard line. Tyler Luttrell made the tackle. Pretty close throughout. And here they are, total yardage, TCU 200 yards, Boise State 197. Only one team has put up more than 300 yards total offense against TCU, and that was Clemson early in the season. On second and five. Three wide receivers right. Outside the Titus Young. But that closed down in a hurry. Excellent job by Tank Carter helping out Greg McCoy. A very good job by Carter because what he, I mean, this guy can just go sideline to sideline. Now watch him. He's out here to the right of your screen, and you're going to see him fly to the football and elude the block of Kirby Moore and then go get himself a tackle. Really well done by Tank Carter. That guy's got a pretty neat story, too. There's a big third and four for Boise State.
outside to Titus Young. Avoids one man and another, but he came up short. He dove. Instead of staying on his feet, maybe he misread the first down line. But he comes up two yards short. Well, his quarterback didn't make it easy on him either, Kellen Moore. That ball sailed on him, and Titus Young had to actually gather himself, go get it, and then restart again. Ideally, when you want those quick little pops, those little smoke screens, bubble screens out to the perimeter, you want that ball in a perfect position where the receiver can get it in stride and just take off and run with it. Another good defensive series for the TCO Horn Frogs. Back deep, Jeremy Curley. Kyle Brotsman with his fifth punt of the game. And the momentum of the game is shifting to TCU. He fakes, he goes to the right and kicks it on a line drive. Curley lets it bounce, and it's down by Boise State at the 26-yard line. Brotsman with a unique style of punting, a sidewinder that time, 39 yards. Well, this weekend, the second season begins. The playoffs underway, and we've got wild card action for you right here in Glendale, Arizona. Sunday, 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 Pacific. It's the Arizona Cardinals hosting the Green Bay Packers. That should be a good one. Well, Green Bay crushed them yesterday. Yeah. I know that in the final week of the season. I don't think it'll have a big bearing on the wild card oh. matchup. We know that Arizona's got the talent to play with anybody. They didn't show anything. They didn't play a lot of their starters yesterday. Now TCU. That pass batted down. Billy Wynn, sophomore from Las Vegas, charging in to bat down the pass. Well, Winter Swipe does a very nice job as well. Here he is. He goes there. Billy Wynn goes here. They both get excellent pressure. Winter Swipe turning the corner on Marcus Cannon just fell down, and Billy Wynn with that gut pressure right in the face of Andy Dalton and then grabs the mask. Left guard Kyle Dooley injured on the play, limps off to the sideline. Replaced by Blaze Foltz, a redshirt freshman from Derby, Kansas. There's Foltz, number 66. Second and 10 coming up for TCU. Two running backs in, Joseph Turner and Ed Wesley. Dalton to Wesley. Trying to find an opening, good tackle. He was slowed down by Winston Venable. Didn't go down until he was wrapped up by the rest of the Boise State defense. Well, they're not giving it up. This run defense has been outstanding. Winter Swipe, watch him keep the leverage on Cannon, and then you'll see Venable 17 fly into your screen. And there's just nowhere for Ed Wesley to go against that Bronco defense. TCU has been held at 36 yards rushing in the game. Incredible, incredible. And that's what Boise State talked about, talking to all their defenders the other day. The biggest key for them coming into this game was to limit the big pops in the run game. There's a big third down play. Dalton throwing, and it's got it down and intercepted. Great interception by Derek A. Darryl Acre, the middle linebacker. Second interception of the game How about Boise the, State. How about the bat down by Jarrell Gavins? Watch this throw. You'll see Gavins just lay out, get his hand up, and then Acre stretches out. What a great pass breakup. And then Acre stretches out. Uh-oh, that's not going to be an interception. No. Yeah, that will not be an interception, but a great, great attempt by Acre, but a terrific bat down pass breakup by Jarrell Gavins. Gavin's a sophomore cornerback from Miami, made a terrific play. The play's under review. Looked like the ball hit the ground. Still awaiting the official ruling from upstairs, but it looks like this ball hits the ground. Well, hard to tell from this side, this angle here, as Acre really stretches out for it, but you'll see the perfect shot. We get a look at it from the other side. This one right here, you'll see the ball hit the ground and move before he possesses it. This is going to end up being an incomplete pass, not an interception. You see right there, as the ball moves, 
and then kind of falls out of his hand and moves again. That's that's not going to be an interception. The ruling on the field is an interception. The review being conducted upstairs. And as both sides await nervously. If it's ruled an incomplete pass, it'll be fourth down for TCU. Great effort Following by Darrell Avery. The ruling is an incomplete pass. Fourth down at the 27 yard line. TCU. And TCU fans are pleased with that ruling, but TCU will be forced to punt. That's a good defensive series by Boise State. Game tied 10 10. Well, they, they've had one bad series, and that was the touchdown that they gave up in the first half to, to Curtis Clay on the sidelines. Otherwise, his defense has been terrific. Anson Kelton has had a couple of booming kicks. This one is high, way up in the air. Fair catch way for by Kyle Wilson at the 27 yard line. Tomorrow night our bowl bash continues on Fox with the FedEx Orange Bowl as the Iowa Hawkeyes take on the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Our coverage of the FedEx Orange Bowl begins tomorrow night at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific in high definition only on Fox. And to ensure that it is a full-fledged bowl game, we send Chris Myers to cover it. He is our Official bowl mascot. Boise State from the 27. Austin Pettis is in. Split out wide to the right side. Now he motions. Kellen Moore They're going to get vertical. Looking to put it up. Goes short out of the backfield. Jeremy Avery. He's got a first down. Out of bounds at the 40 yard line. 13 yard gain on the play. Kellen Moore 17 of 28 152 yards. You just wonder when Boise State and Kellen Moore are going to try to dial up that deep vertical pass to Titus Young. We have reached the end of the third quarter when you have two unbeaten teams as highly ranked as these you look for a terrific ball game. That's what they're giving us in the Tostitos Festi Fiesta Bowl at the end of the third quarter. We're tied 10-10. The Fiesta Bowl continues after these messages from your local Fox station. Welcome back to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl at Glendale, Arizona. Sam Rosen, Tim Bryan, Chris Myers, number four in the BCS. TCU, 12 and 0, number six in the BCS. Boise State 13-0, tied 10-10 as we start the fourth quarter at the 40-yard line. Kellen Moore, Jeremy Avery carries, and he's tripped up. Gets forward to the 43. This has been a hard-fought battle. The defenses have been outstanding in this game. Well, the game plans really for both defenses have been executed perfectly. And then I, I, I'm very surprised that we got 20 collective points in this game, 10-10. You're talking about two teams during the course of the regular season that collectively put up 84 a game. Incredible. On second and seven. It's Doug Martin. Short gain across the 45 up to the 46. If you're just joining us, Boise State grabbed the lead with their defense coming through as Brandon Thompson made the interception and returned it 51 yards for a touchdown. Then late in the first half, it was Andy Dalton to Curtis Clay, Curtis Clay yep. for a touchdown 30 yards that got TCU on the board for the first time in the game. And really a good move by Clay on the double move and quarterback Andy Dalton sold it with the pump fake and he was able to run by the corner. Brandon Thompson two tight ends in and Avery the running back goes in motion comes the blitz Moore gets rid of it and it's broken up good defensive play by Jason Teague as he covered Mitch Burrows on the play I'll tell you the incredible number and, and Jerry Hughes has gotten after it a little bit today and has gotten some hits on Kellen Moore Kellen Moore when you look at him 
Guy's been sacked five times during the course of the season. <laughs> Five sacks all season long. Zero tonight against the TCU defense, Sam, that came into this game with 33 sacks. Kyle Brotsman is deep. That's Jeremy to punt. Jeremy Curley is deep to receive for TCU. Sixth punt of the game for Brotsman. Good kick. Curley backs up to the six yard line, gets away from one man. Flag on the play back at the five yard line as Curley is dragged down. Good coverage by Chris Roberson on the play to make the tackle. 47 yard punt. Here's the penalty. All right. Bill Amonier will wait for a little discussion. Illegal block in the back. Number 27, half the distance from the goal from the spot of the foul. First down. Jason T called for the penalty, and TCU is backed up to their own two yard line. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl is sponsored by Reese's, the perfect combination of chocolate and peanut butter. By Allstate, proud sponsors of college football. Are you in good hands? And by G2, half the calories, all the G. Welcome back to University of Phoenix Stadium in Glendale, Arizona. It's time for tonight's GMC May the Best Truck Win Game Summary. Total yardage close. TCU held to only 38 yards rushing in the game. Kellen Moore, 17 of 29. Andy Dalton, 18 of 27. Well, the touchdown and interception for Andy Dalton, who's lined up in the end zone and puts it up and completes it. And breaking away briefly on the play was Jimmy Young getting up to the 15 yard line. That's good for a first down. Jimmy Young, you talk about a selfless player, a guy that you look at him last year. He led this team in receptions. He had 59. He's come into this year. He's only got 29 catches. And I, I think part of it is Andy Dalton does a great job of spreading the ball around, and there's been other weapons that have been able to step forward, but. I think talking to Gary Patterson, this is the one guy, Jimmy Young, that he really pointed out. His whole offense said the selflessness of the offense, but in particular, number 88, Jimmy Young. Matthew Tucker, the running back. Everybody out. Dalton puts it up deep for Jimmy Young, and he's got it with a beautiful leaping catch. He got behind Brandon Thompson to make the grab. And with that pass, Andy Dalton has become the all-time leading passer well, in yardage. Let's see what for happens. TCU. Brandon Thompson's in press coverage. And I don't think he got a good jam on Jimmy Young. As Jimmy Young was releasing off the line of scrimmage, you can see what a big body Jimmy Young is. Now he's hard to press, big physical wide receiver. And I think he just beat Brandon Thompson on his release. On first down, he tried to hit Jeremy Curley, but he missed. And you see the numbers passing the previous leader, Max Naki, who set the record in between 1992 and 95 of 7,370 yards. Now it's Andy Dalton, number one in TCU and history. Here's the play. There's the matchup right there. Brandon Thompson in press position. Let's see what happens. Oh, yeah, he just misses. He tries to press and give a two hand shiver to Jimmy Young right in the chest and Jimmy did a great job of just knocking the hands down getting his inside release and then breaking it down the field on second and ten the play fake Dalton throws it sick and incomplete it was almost caught by Jonathan Jones after the tip. Here it is right here on the slant. Now you're going to see the tip on the ball. A little pump fake right there. Oh, oh, Jonathan Jones almost got it on the deflection. Who went up and hit all Aaron Tevis yes. again? Getting in the throwing lane. Good job reading the quarterback. Quarterback pulls his hand off that ball. You know it's getting ready to be released. Tevis got in the lane and got his hands up and got a big breakup. TCU only one for nine and third down conversions in the game. Here's third and ten. Dalton gets time. He throws deep, and it is intercepted by Brandon Thompson. His second interception of the game. Oh. 
He had Antoine Hicks covered perfectly. Yeah, that ball's just underthrown, and it doesn't have enough air on it because you watch Hicks as the bigger receiver. You get some air under that, let him go up and get it. It's underthrown, and Thompson picked it off. The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on Fox is sponsored by the Sierra from GMC. Never send a truck to do a Sierra's job. These great overhead shots are brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. Well, and here's the interception here, and, and Antoine Hicks is 6-2 going against a 5-10 corner. You've got to get that ball up in the air to give him an opportunity to get it. Brandon Thompson now is a ball hawk, and if you put it in his range, he's usually going to come down with it. That's interception number two tonight, number six on the season. From the 22, he fought the tight end motions. Doug Martin carries, and he's hit immediately. And shoved back, Tank Carter, the middle linebacker, with the first hit. And then the finish by Darrell Washington. What a pair of linebackers for TCU. Andy Dalton, first time he's had a multi-interception game. Two interceptions in the game. One was returned for a touchdown, 51 yards by Brandon Thompson. Well, and, and think about this, Sam. 12 games this season, he threw five interceptions. That's right. Only five interceptions, and not one in the second half of a football game. That changed here tonight. Kellen Moore looking for brother Kirby, and he's got him. And Kirby gets close to the first down line. Let's see where the spot is. It's right there. Kirby Moore played some basketball in high school at Prosser, Washington. But he said he never was the football junkie his brother Kellen was. But <laughs> Kellen used him as a receiver, and here they are together at Boise State. Still catching the ball the way they did in the backyard. Rafael Priest is on the field. He was not supposed to go, but he's out there. Doug Martin carries, and he's brought down on the play. Well, they started playing football at age nine, did Kellen Moore. And there was brother Kirby right alongside, the younger brother. And he started throwing to him. And dad, Tom, coached him up in high school. And we talked about being a football Bunch junkie. They downloaded football oh, games. Man. And he broke up defenses. And this season, he threw 39 touchdown passes. Yeah, one, every, one every 10 throws. He's got great football intelligence, FBI, in terms of understanding what the defense is showing and how to break it down. Kellen Moore rolls and throws to Kirby, and he's got it up at the 32-yard line, but there's maybe a gain of one on the play up at the 33. And I think that's what Chris Peterson, who they do a great job recruiting, and, and they're not so hung up on size and speed. Kellen Moore came in and talked to us the other night. He's six foot tall. He's about 180, 185 pounds. And, I mean, he's not imposing physically when he walks through the door. But when you watch him play, just as Chris Peterson did, won't get caught up on the size and the speed. He loves smart football players. Third and nine for Boise State. Everybody out. And the pass batted up in the air, falls incomplete. Good pressure up front by Wayne Daniels, the defensive end. A junior out of Kilgore, Texas. Again, I think the key for defensive linemen, anytime you see them get bat downs like that, number one, usually they're not getting great rush, so they're marrying the quarterback. But the good ones, and we've seen it a couple of times in this game, they read the quarterback. And as soon as that offhand, Sam, comes off the football, they know that the quarterback's getting ready to release the ball. So they screen in front of him, play it accordingly, get their hands up. That time he got a pass breakup, got a bat down. And TCU's defense comes up big after the turnover. Rotsman throws it on the fake, completes to Efra, the tight end. Kyle Efra inside the TCU 40. They fake the punt, and Brotsman hits Kylie Falk for a big first down. Well, and, and Boise State has these gadget plays. We saw it in 07. Watch this. He's sitting as the up back. He clears out right down the seam. 
How about the throw from Bronsman? Guy right in his face, and he throws a perfect strike to Kyle Efa for the first down, and a big, big first down. That was in the fourth, fourth quarter. That was a fourth and nine. They gained 29 down to the TCU 38-yard line. They are not afraid to do anything in big spots, Boise State. Three wide receivers left. Everybody out. More to Efa again. First down. At the 27-yard line, and suddenly Kyle Efa, a sophomore out of Boise, Idaho, and Capitol High School, becomes a big target for Kellen Moore. You got to take one more look here at the fake by Kyle Efa. Here he is. He's going to release as the rush comes. <laughs> Brodsman with Tanner Brock right in his face. Throws a perfect ball, and I believe that's the second time they've run that same play this year. Boise State with their punt team. Austin Pettis on the field. Kirby Moore motions. Kellen Moore gets pressure and completes it to Titus Young. Down to the 18 yard line. Alex Abilie with the tackle. Comes up just short of the first down. No pressure on the quarterback. Kellen Moore is going to get it out quick, but that time actually let that play develop, and he's just going to hit all those little open voids in the zone. You can't stop him from doing it. If you're going to play off and soft and show him zone coverage, he's going to be able to pick it apart if you can't get pressure on it. Titus Young, a career-high eight catches in the game. The play fake. Moore throwing wide open is Galarna. The tight end down to the two-yard line. Tommy Gallarda, junior tight end from Freya, California, making the grab. And Kellen Moore has been outstanding on this drive. There he is, Gallarda. He's just going to run out to the corner of the end zone. And the whole defense got sucked up. Darrell Washington, I believe, was the guy responsible for him defensively. Either way, Gallarda wide open. And Gallarda is a huge weapon now down in the red zone for Boise State. Two tight ends in. Doug Martin, big hole, he's in, touchdown! Boise State keyed by the fake punt and they have the lead again here's Brodsman for the extra point it's good and Boise State leads TCU 17 to 10 look at the touchdown here Danny Paul with a real good block Chris Potter was able to kick out Wayne Daniels then it's the safety against Dougie Martin touchdown Welcome back to vote for Mark Ingram or any of the other AT&T All-America candidates. Text vote to 345-345 on your AT&T wireless phone or go to foxallamerica.com for more information. You could win a trip to next year's national championship game. Find out the AT&T All-America Player of the Year winner during the BCS national championship game on January 7th. Doug Martin's 15th rushing touchdown this season. Kellen Moore was five for six on that drive, 49 yards. Not bad, Doug Martin, for a guy who started the season playing safety for the first three games. Boise State has never trailed in this game. They had a 10-0 lead. TCU came back to tie, and now it's Boise State's lead at 17 to 10. Ryan Christian and Jeremy Curley deep. Rotsman's kick coming down to Ryan Christian at the three. And he ran straight into one of the defenders. Stanaway. Travis Stanaway making the tackle. There's Doug Martin up, over, and in. And TCU has the seven-point lead. 
The Tostitos Fiesta Bowl on Fox is sponsored by GMC. Put us up against anyone and be the best truck win. By FedEx, we understand you need reliable shipping options, FedEx. And by Taco Bell, think outside the bun. And our aerial coverage for tonight's game presented by Bud Light. And I apologize. Obviously, it's Boise State with a seven-point lead. Doug Martin taking the handoff and going in for the go-ahead touchdown. Now, TCU with the ball at the 24. And Andy Dalton's got him out of drive. Quick out to Jeremy Curley. Who lost the ball. It's incomplete. Winston Venable. Covering on the play. Well, and Venable's the guy, too. We've seen him go after. He's a very, very good football player. Better at the run, Sam, than he is versus the pass. So they're getting him out there in space to the field. He's the field outside linebacker or rover. You can see, I mean, that dude is built to play the run. He gets after it, but all this space is hard for him to cover. Four wide receivers. The play fake. Dalton goes outside. They pass off the hands of Antoine Hicks. He was covered by Brandon Thompson. Boy, Brandon Thompson's played a big game tonight. Let's go to the sideline to Chris Myers. Yes, yeah, Sam, it's been a stock market night for Brandon Thompson. Up, down, down, up. Remember, he was the guy who ran the interception back for a touchdown, but then got beat on the Curtis Lay touchdown pass before the half, and then came back with the second interception. He has had a three-interception game last year, but all he's thinking about now as the Boise crowd gets louder is keeping TCU out of the end zone. Third and ten. Four wide receivers. Dalton with time. He's going deep for Jimmy Young. He overthrew it. Three and out for TCU. We knew about Boise State's offense, but their defense has really played well. They sure have in, in every in every phase. I mean, the, the defensive line has been terrific at limiting the, the running opportunity. You got 38 yards rushing for TCU, a team that runs for over 250 a game. Then you look at the linebackers. They've made a lot of plays tonight. And then the corners, you can't say enough. Kyle Wilson has been terrific. Brandon Thompson in the secondary has been the player of the game. Hanson Kelton's punt, a good long one. Wilson backs up to the 18, brings it back. With a little room on the sideline, he's out of bounds. Boise State was in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl in 2007. Underdogs to Oklahoma, but they jumped into the lead in that game. They led at halftime 21 to 10, but Adrian Peterson led Oklahoma back with two touchdowns. And then Boise State in overtime, two-point conversion, and Boise State won it 43 to 42. Well, the whole playbook is open for them. We saw the hook and ladder in that game, and then we saw the Statue of Liberty for the win. Incredible. Boise State using the fake punt tonight to keep a drive alive. Jeremy Avery bouncing off one tackler is pulled back. That's a loss of about three on the play. Let's go downstairs. Chris, what about 2007? Well, people still talk about it today. A fairy tale finish for the guy who scored the two point conversion to end that upset of Oklahoma. Ian Johnson, the running back who seconds after on live national television said he wanted to propose that did to Boise State cheerleader Chrissy on the field. That's true reality TV, Sam. And I spoke to Ian Johnson this week. He wanted to be here. He said he'll be watching on television. He's on the Vikings practice squad and happily married and said he still remembers all the twists and turns and that upset of Boise State against Oklahoma. And of course, you were the matchmaker, Chris. On second down, Kellen Moore throws a little wide behind Mitch Burrows. It'll bring up a third and long for Boise State. Kellen Moore, 22 of 36, 201 yards. A big third and 12. Boise would like to maintain possession and take some time off the clock. Three wide receivers left on third and 12. Moore has time. Wants to go deep. Way upstairs for Titus Young. Gets out of bounds. Incomplete. 
Young was covered, double covered by T.J. Johnson and Jason Teague. Now I don't understand that play, to be honest Neither with you. I. I know it was third and long, but TCU had every one of their defenders extremely deep, and you just weren't going to beat them with a deep throw. And you saw some underneath routes that were coming free, and Kellen Moore tried to take the deep shot down the field. Risky throw with all those defenders deep. Last thing you want to do right now with 548 left up seven. It's throw a risky throw and get intercepted. Jeremy Curley is back. So re return the punt to Brotsman. Brotsman runs to his right. Sidewinder kick grabbed on the line by Curley. Good return by Jeremy Curley. And he is slowed down by Brotsman and taken out of bounds. But great field position for TCU. That Curley. time the line drive punt didn't work for Bratzman. Well, and that's the thing. And Curley's brought a couple back this year. He's got electrifying ability in the open field, but there was no hang time on that punt. You said it. It was a line drive. The coverage could not get down there before Curley was able to field it. And if he can field it and get a running start before you get any defenders near him, he's going to make a play as he did there. 39-yard return. Gives TCU a short field. Matthew Tucker, the running back. Dalton puts it up for Hicks. He juggles and drops it. Going against Brandon Thompson, Antoine Hicks had it for a moment. And then it rolled free, incomplete. Could not make a better throw if you're Andy Dalton. And it looked like as Antoine Hicks went up, he got his feet tangled up with Brandon Thompson. You'll see right there. No, he didn't. He just jumped a little too soon, mistimed his jump, and couldn't come down with the football. Perfect, perfect throw from Andy Dalton. Antoine Hicks, a sophomore from Arlington, Texas. Tucker, the running back, splits out wide. Empty backfield. Four-man rush. Dalton getting pressure, and they've got him. Aaron Tevis came up for the sack, the second of the game. Well, Tevis is just spying Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton is a good runner. Here's Tevis right here, 36. As Dalton scrambles and comes up this way, watch 36 converge on him. He's just shadowing him the whole way. As soon as Dalton breaks contain to the left and starts to run, you saw Aaron Tevis put his foot on the gas and accelerate right into Andy Dalton for a big tackle. They have to get to the 21 for a first down. Everybody out. Dalton throws short to Bart Johnson, and he's taken down by Venable. Forward progress to the 27-yard line. It'll be a fourth down for TCU. We have an injured Boise State player on the field. Looks like Billy Wynn is down on his laying on his stomach. He's being checked out. We'll step out for a moment. It's fourth down for TCU. Freshman Darren Koontz replaces the injured Billy Wynn. Dalton going up and down the line to let his lineman know the play. Ryan Christian in motion. Everybody out. Dalton being pressured. Throws and the ball's incomplete. Jimmy Young couldn't hang on. Boise State's defense incredibly good in this football game just timing it right and as soon as Andy Dalton broke contain that time to his right started to scramble the defenders got up in his face forced him to get rid of it Jimmy Young couldn't hold on to it on the sideline so impressed with Boise State's defense and, and in particular they're tackling in space Ryan Winterswike with good pressure on yeah. that last play now Boise State with the lead and the ball at their own 27. Doug Martin, who had the go-ahead touchdown, gets a couple of yards up to the 29-yard line. Tank Carter, the middle linebacker with the tackle. 
TCU with two timeouts remaining. Boise State has all three of theirs. The Horned Frogs need a big defensive stand. Over 300 yards for Boise State in this game. Only the second team to do it against TCU this season. Clemson the other one. Blitz coming. Martin is wrapped up short of the 30 yard line. Once again Tank Carter was there along with Alex Ibillier. Here's that fourth down play and it looked like Andy Dalton had the post route open. Right here. Right here number two Curtis Clay. You'll see him coming across the middle of the field. I mean, it, he never sees open. him there. Tim. He never sees him because he's running out to his right and then all these defenders converge up and force him to throw it to the sideline. TCU uses a timeout. They have one remaining. Three twenty six to go here in the fourth quarter with Boise State. Leading 17 to 10, a matchup of unbeatens in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. Number four, TCU. Number six, Boise State. And both these schools know what a win would do for their football program. Two tight ends in. Galarda and Ifa, they both split out. Now Galarda shifts. Moore gets time. And completes it to his brother Kirby up at the 39 yard line. That's enough for a first down. There's the brother connection. Watch what they've done to Jerry Hughes, and they did it a lot tonight. One, two. They have Tommy Gallardo sitting right there next to Brunel Myers, and they're just going to double Jerry Hughes. They're going to make sure they keep TCU's best defender off the quarterback. Big cushion out on the side, and Kellen is able to find his younger brother, Kirby, for a huge, huge first down. With three minutes remaining, TCU just one timeout left. Doug Martin up to the 43 yard line. A pickup of four on the play. Tyler Luttrell with a tackle for TCU. That big number one for TCU. They only have one left. They need a couple of big stops here. Kellen Moore has had a solid game for Boise State. Doug Martin hit by Tank Carter, the middle linebacker. Another good tackle at the 44 yard line. Brings up a third and five for Boise State. And just watch this right here. I mean, oh, they're it's still running. Obviously, running the football to, to milk and bleed that clock, but they're not going to run on, on TCU. TCU's got the extra defender up into the box. And anytime Boise State's going to put their fullback out there in two backs. We're going to see TCU put the extra defenders in the box to make this sure is, they outman them. This is the game for TCU. They have to have a stop right here. On third and five. Here they come. Here comes a blitz. Kellen Moore gets rid of it and overthrows everybody. An all out blitz for TCU. A minute 16 remaining. And we have got post game coverage with Chris Rose, Jimmy Johnson, and Eddie George. We've got the trophy presentation with our man, Mr. Bowl Game, Chris Myers. And of course, post game analysis. Stay with us. I'll tell you what would have been smart right there if you're Kellen Moore with all that blitz coming at you is run it to the left and just go down and chew that clock. Mm. You make TCU take their final timeout instead of just throwing it away. You're right. Now, TCU looking to go all out for a block. Rotsman gets it away. It bounces. Curley's got to let it roll. And it's down at the one yard line by Kyle Wilson.
55 yard punt. Last time Bradsman's punt was returned big by Jeremy Curley. But now TCU has got to go 99 yards. How about the plays by him tonight? That punt right there, knocking it all the way down to the one, and then the great throw on the fake punt to Kyle Efa for what ended up being a huge, huge play in this game. Well, you see that. TCU with 106 remaining and one timeout. They've got to go 99 yards. Three man rush. Dalton throws outside to Antoine Hicks. He's out of bounds at the 13 yard line. 101 remaining. TCU has won 14 games in a row. Boise State trying to become only the second team to go 14 and 0 in a season. Ohio State did it in 2002. Everybody out. Dalton's throw to Curley, and he's brought down by Kyle Wilson. A first down at the 21, and the clock stops. And you know Boise State has had this one circled on the calendar in terms of an opportunity. Now, they didn't know they were going to play TCU, but an opportunity to play this team again. TCU is the only team that has beaten Boise State, Sam, in two years. Here is tonight's All-State Good Hands play of the game, and this was the huge one, the fake punt. Kyle Bradsman doing it twice this season. <laughs> 29 yards on a fourth and nine play, hitting tight end Kylie Fall. You can't say enough about the throw with the pressure in his face. Tanner Brock was coming up the middle and was just right in the grill. Bradsman just threw it perfectly. TCU used their last timeout. Gary Patterson brought his team to the sideline. They talked things over. That last play was not a first down. It's second and two at the 21 yard line. Billy Wynn, who was injured earlier, back in at defensive tackle for Boise. The rush is on. Dalton throws and completes it. Antoine Hicks fighting for yardage. Gets up to the 36 yard line. It's a first down for TCU. A pickup of 15 on the play. No huddle. And the ball is spiked to stop the clock with 42 seconds remaining. Today's game was produced by Mike Burks, directed by Sandy Grossman, the associate directors, Tom Huey, Tom Huey and Aaron Stoikov. The broadcast associates, Eric Mandia and Matt Saldana. Our thanks to Gary Lynn and Emmett McGuire in the booth. There's Brotsman, the punter getting everybody fired up. Dalton being rushed, throws it up deep, and it is incomplete. Flag on the play. Jimmy Young gets up, yells something at Kyle Wilson. Jarrell Gavins was there for Boise State. That was Gavins down on the field. The man who was covering on the play. Pass interference, defense, number 10. 15 yard penalty for the previous spot. Automatic, first down. Gavins, a sophomore from Miami, Florida, commits the interference penalty. Well, you better be careful with Antoine Hay or Jimmy Young, excuse me, running down the sideline without safety help over the top. And watch the hit from Billy Wynn here as he lowers the boom on Andy Dalton. Good throw by Andy Dalton with all the pressure in his face. It's a 15 yard penalty. Gavins is hurt on the play. The ball will be spotted at the Boise State 49 yard line.
36 seconds remaining. TCU out of timeouts. Jarrell Gevins helped to the sideline. Kyle Wilson back in. Had one cornerback. The other corner is Brandon Thompson. Everybody out. Dalton getting pressure. On the move, he throws and completes it to Jeremy Curley, who's out of bounds at the Boise State 30-yard line. They're in striking range of the end zone. Nice job by Andy Dalton, just extending the play. He'll escape out to his right. And a good job by the receiver, Curley, coming back to the football. Has Boise State backed off too much, giving them too much room, Tim? Well, they can't do it now. I mean, they're in striking distance. They're going to have to play medium-range coverage. They can't play off and soft to get huge cushion. And that pass up for grabs is intercepted by Venable, who goes to the ground at the 28. of the game for Boise State. Winston Venable picked it off after the deflection. How about the pressure from Ryan Winterswijk and then Brandon Thompson gets up and tips it up in the air. There's the pressure. Too much air under the football. Gives an opportunity for Brandon Thompson to recover. He has had a huge game, no question. Brandon Thompson, the defensive player of the game for Boise State. Boise State wins the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl 17 to 10 over at TCU. with their win over Oklahoma. Oh, they're gonna get him in the good. Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. <laughs> and here they are again. <laughs> Two previously undefeated teams and Boise State secures their spot as a national power. I cannot tell you how impressed I am with their defense and how they played tonight. They were so good at the line, the linebackers in the secondary, they were terrific. We'll be going to the studio to Chris Rose, Jimmy Johnson, and Eddie George right after this. For the second time in four seasons, Boise State is celebrating a championship in the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl, 17-10 winners over TCU. And with that, we welcome you back inside the Fox Network Center. Jimmy Johnson, Eddie George, I am Chris Rose. And I'm telling you, everybody's going to want Boise State in their bowl game. I mean, it's coming down <laughs> to the last few <laughs> seconds. Uh, you guys talked about it in the pregame. Be careful of the trick play. That's what won it for him. Chris Peterson, uh, the last time they were in the Fiesta Bowl, had the hook and ladder, then they had the Statue of Liberty. Now he pulls out the fake punt. You know, really a great defensive game on both sides of the football, but the fake punt, fourth and nine, 29 yard gain, that set up the winning touchdown. Would you have the guts to call that in that sort of situation, Jimmy? If Be I'm, honest. If I'm coaching in Boise State, I'm going to call him. <laughs> That's what Martin <laughs> finishes it off with the uh, game-winning touchdown. And let's give some credit to that Boise State defense oh, in man. Andy Dalton's face all night. Absolutely. Defensive coordinator for Boise State, Justin Wilcox, did an outstanding job of game planning Andy Dalton all night. Uh, he made him throw, what, uh, three interceptions mm -hmm. tonight, uh, got to him two sacks. They, they, they protected Andy Dalton all year long, but they, they pressured him into making some really bad decisions tonight. Yeah, Dalton uh, had thrown just 10 interceptions in his previous 29 games. Tonight he got picked off three times. And so now Boise State is just the second team ever to go 14-0 and in a season, joining the 2002 National Championship Ohio State Buckeyes. Right now, back to Glendale and Sam Rosen. Sam. 
Thanks very much, Chris. The celebration continuing for Boise State. We're getting ready for the presentation of the championship trophy. Let's go to public address announcer Jeff Munn. Ladies and gentlemen, on the field, Fox Sports' Chris Myers. Again, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl put on a great show, and Boise State victorious. I'm standing next to the head coach of the 14-0 Boise State Broncos, Chris Peterson. And ladies and gentlemen, a sea of orange and happy players joining us to present the awards. Frito Lake Group Vice President of Marketing, Ann McCurgy, and Tostitos Fiesta Bowl Chairman, Alan Young. Alan, we'll have you make the presentation. Well, on behalf of the 39th annual Tostitos Fiesta Bowl and our 3,000 volunteers, we're proud to present this trophy to Coach Chris Peterson and the Boise State Broncos. Well, Coach, once again, you, you won all the games you played. Second team in NCAA history to go 14-0. Are you worthy of being number one? I, I just know that these kids have the most unbelievable heart. We got the most unbelievable fans. And like we said before, this one once again is for you, Bronco Nation. And Coach, we expected a lot of offense. Of course, you beat a good TCU team. Talk about the fake punt, the call, the guts. You're always worth a trick or two when it matters most. Well, we have tremendous respect for TCU. We knew it was going to be a hard-fought game. We knew it would be a defensive game. And, uh, you know, a play here, a play there can turn the tide. And, you know, like I said, our hat's off to TCU. This game could have gone either way. And uh, we we're fortunate to pull it out. All right, and the magic at the Fiesta Bowl, Coach. Once again, a pleasure to see your team. But thank you. Congratulations. Thank you very much. There's no tonight. All right, our honor to present the 39th annual Tostitos Fiesta Bowl Gabe Trophy on behalf of the 3,000 volunteers, head coach Chris Peterson. We appreciate that. And, Ann, you have the award for the defensive player. Excuse me, Coach, if we can press. And we'll take care of the defensive player first. Go right ahead. And we have uh, – I'll let you do the presentation. All right. First of all, Coach Peterson, and to all the fans and you incredible players, what a game, congratulations. <laughs> On behalf of Frito-Lay and the entire Tostitos family, your defensive MVP, Brandon Thompson. Uh, Brad, Brandon, congratulations. Two interceptions uh, in the game, and you held out a TCU offense that a lot of people had problems holding. What was the key defensively across the board for your, your squad tonight? Uh, you know, we stressed all week, just swarming to the ball. You know, collectively as a defense, we knew we were going to have to run to the ball. They got a lot of great playmakers, but uh, luckily for us, we were blessed enough to make more plays on this day. And certainly after the interception, there was a touchdown. Then you came back, had another interception. So talk about the mindset of having to battle in a close game. Uh, you know, they tell you to have a short memory. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to lose a little sleep over giving up that touchdown, but uh, I'll take the win any day of the week. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, and congratulations. Again. Thank you. Brandon Thompson. All right, and our offensive MVP. Your offensive <laughs> MVP. All right, Kyle, terrific defense, and you were the recipient of the fake punt, the pass, and a couple of other big plays. Let's talk about what the call was there, and did you know the ball was going to you? Uh, on the fake, yeah, it was Riddler check, and uh, I just didn't want to screw it up. <laughs> so. so, Talk about the intensity of Boise State as the fans go, <laughs> go crazy here, Kyle against a TCU team just like Oklahoma a couple of years ago where people thought that uh, you were too small or you didn't match up or they were the, the bigger, stronger team. Yeah, well, I mean, our guys just fight harder and they play hard and they just want it. 
And uh, thank you, fans, for coming out. This is ridiculous how many people came out. So thank you for coming. And uh, undefeated 14 and 0. Should you think of your team as number one? Uh, probably not. <laughs> but uh, I mean, we we uh, maybe next year. I don't know. We we have a great team and uh, we fight hard and we were undefeated. At least you're honest about it. Congratulations again on a great performance. I want to bring back Alan Young for a moment for some final thoughts. Alan. Well, you gentlemen played your hearts out on the field, and we congratulate you for that. But before we leave, I want to thank Ann and her Tostitos Fiesta Bowl team for all you do for collegiate athletics. And uh, to everyone celebrating here tonight, have a safe and happy new year. And the Fiesta Bowl, the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl in Boise State for 2010. Once again, a tremendous show. And Coach Peterson, once again, Boise State, the seed three years ago where you put the school on the map and you continue with great success. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year to all you guys and Happy New Year to Bronco Nation. We love you. All right, Sammy, back to you. Congratulations. Thanks, Chris. Great job. Congratulations to the great fans of Boise State. The Broncos of Boise State come to the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl for the second time and for the second time come away winners. They defeat the Horn Frogs of TCU 17 to 10 for Tim Ryan. This is Sam Rosen. So long everyone. The studio is next.